surprised that Al Arbor didn't follow right through because Arbor is a, usually a, a set coach where he knows what line he wants to play against a certain line. He's making his switch now, uh, and you'll find that Detroit will not be able to swing back, so. Well, the big hand is for Bob Mason. He's playing only his third game with the season. Please stand by. The audio problems you're experiencing originate in network transmission. The change. Uh, the home club has the la that advantage of a game at home. They can make the last change of a hockey. as we say a half a checking line on there but that's about it right now the puck is driven back into the Detroit end Rutherford cleared it into the corner Willie Huber played it ahead here's Paul Woods he dropped it Crotche knocked it back out center right Hicks wearing number 23 checked by Fossey this is Stephen Person now Person drives it into the Detroit zone Rutherford deflected it into the corner Nedimanski goes in after it now Nedimanski Billy Hogabaum Hogabaum has it off to Sobchuk. Sobchuk clearing it back now. Greg Jolly with it. And Willie Huber still in the Detroit zone. Huber ahead now to Dennis Polonich. Polonich took the long shot. Smith steers it off to the side. No scores. He played three minutes, 12 seconds. Here's Dennis Polonich trying to work it out in front. It's taken by Sobchuk. And it went right through John Hamel. And came back to the Detroit blue line. Perry Miller has it there. Now Miller to Sobchuk. Out on the right side to Polonich. Dennis Polonich trying to work around Plotkin. Plotkin takes him to the board. The two of them go into the corner. They bump there. Number 27 is John Tonelli who came out with the puck. 
ahead to Wayne Mary. Now Billy Harris stopped at center ice by Miller. And that's Billy Hogabom. Hogabom for the wing from center ice. A long shot wide of the Islander goal. Harris takes it off the board in pretty steady play. Fast to finale at center ice. Here stopped now by Errol Thompson. And Thompson waiting for his team to change. Drops it back. Here's Hamel. From the blue line, a shot. Smith blocks that. Dennis Potvin digs in behind his own goal, trying to work away from Polino. Cleared it out on the left side. Tonelli over the line into the Detroit zone. He goes in along the boards with Reed Larson, and he grabs Larson. There'll be a penalty coming up to Tonelli. On the delayed call, the wings roll the puck into the Islander zone, and the penalty now will be called. And so, with the Red Wing power play coming up, we'll be back. Get over. When you buy a $10,000 money market certificate from... Well, this is a case where Tonelli just grabbed Larson around the neck and pulled him back and got the penalty. He's off for holding. Four minutes, 22 seconds the time of the penalty. And Detroit with the extra man. Now Willie Huber goes in behind his own goal. Huber starts Peter Mahovlich out. He moves to center ice. Mahovlich with Polino on one wing, Thompson on the other. Peter Mahovlich in behind the New York goal, set up for Huli Huber with a shot, he scores! And the Red Wings on a pretty play, started by Mahovlich and finished by Huber. Lead one message. A perfect pass by Mahovlich. He just, they, he let on, he was going to make a little drop pass after he got around the outside of the defense, and they went for it. Now he spotted Huber coming into the slot, and right from the circle, Huber on the short side beat Smith right at his glove. Smith thought he had the, the post tight, but he didn't. A good play by Peter Mahavlich. He just had them all fooled as he went around the outside of the defense and made the perfect pass out to Huber coming into the slot. Checked there by Jolly. Bratton getting a bump in along the boards, but Jolly picks up the loose puck. Feeds it ahead to Dale McCourt. The Bratton coming up the left side, but it was broken up by Person. Now here's Huber at his own blue line. Willie Huber's pass to Nedomansky. That was knocked away by Dave Lewis, who then sent Nedomansky to the ice. Greg Jolly back in his own zone. Center ice to Nedomansky here now over the line. Too quickly was Dale McCourt. As the Bratton carried in just behind him. The offside brings the play back out over the Islanders' blue line. We shall be back after we call for this. I understand we're having some audio problem uh, emanating from our telecast area here in the island. So we apologize for that and want you to know that we're trying to get it cleared up as best we can. As a matter of fact, I don't know the matter. My earphone isn't working at all. So now where's mine? Talk loud. Now here's Nystrom coming back into the Detroit zone. It goes in behind the Red Wing goal. Jimmy Rutherford cleared it, but Nystrom held it in. The Islanders deep in the Detroit end, back on the line. And played it out in front. Keller took a shot. Now he's hitting the goal crease, third in the corner. Honor Keller, young man out of Sweden, played it back to the line. Dennis Putman, he fired the shot, and Rutherford has grabbed that, and he holds on, and the Islanders grab it. And that's what Jimmy has to do on those plays that are in close to the net. He can't take a chance on dishing it over to the corner. On the first play, he just threw it into the corner and he gave the Islanders possession again. When he gets a chance to catch it like that, he has to get a stoppage of play and let the wings get themselves organized deep in their own zone. Now to try it again, coming out with Peter Mahomes, Gerald Thompson, and Mike Polino. with Lauren Henning at center ice, Bourne on one wing, and Gary Howard on the other. Lewis and John Putman back along, they make it Bob Lorimer, back along the Islander defense. Puck stayed in the Detroit zone. Henning cleared it into the corner. This is Bourne with it. That shot out of the way on the short side by Rutherford. Billy Huber checked in behind the goal, but Greg Jolly covers up. Jolly cleared it ahead to Polino. Mike Polino backhands it out center ice. 
And it's sent right back in by Lorimer. A bouncing puck in behind the Detroit goal. Jolly out on the right side now for Felino. Mike Felino just cleared it out center ice. Dave Lewis. His pass gets over on the side. Mike Bossy went quickly in after it. Bossy playing it back to Lewis at the Islanders' blue line. Detroit leads it 1 0. We near the seven minute mark of the first period. A bouncing puck seared in behind the Detroit goal. Over on the left side, it came now to Peter Mahavlitz. Here's Mahavlitz coming out center ice. Got Polino with him. Over the line, Mahavlitz trying to go through. They whistle it down. Plays offside. Big Peter can beat one man on a case like that. Felino beat him over the blue line, but Mahavlitz, because of his height, he gives those little head feints as he's coming down to a defenseman, and he gets them moving the wrong direction. He can walk around them. We might add the fact that Ned Nedimansky scored a couple of goals the other night in New York. Uh, his wife, Vera, was over with some friends from Detroit, and I understand they're here on the island to see this game. They're all season ticket holders in, in Detroit. Clarence and Sharon Catal Catalo are there. Uh, Chip and Nova AC and uh, Hank and Linda Marcus are very good friends of the Nedimanskis, and they're all here at the game. Now the Islanders in the white jersey clear to Crutch He started out very strongly this year. He shoots it in behind the Detroit goal. Dennis Kalanich and Clark Gillies. That's Gillies coming up with a puck, playing it back to the line. Having to fire a shot there, and that's deflected off of Kalanich up into the crowd. Dave Langeman back along that left point. He didn't let that shot go. He was a boy that was drafted in 1974 by Bill Torrey, the manager of uh, the hockey club here, and he played, I guess, in world hockey because they got him last year. They're very high on him. Uh, he has a little, of ex little experience, and they're trying to fit him into this lineup. Now Mahavlitz comes out to take the face off. Hicks and Paul Woods. That's the checking line for Detroit. Polonich will come back on. Mahavlitz can make his way to the far side and get to the Detroit bench. Larson clears it out on the left side. Glenn Hicks had trouble with it there. In behind the Detroit net, Reed Larson again. Now Larson took a heavy bump. Gillies made a run at him, and the puck came all the way back into the Islander zone. And Mark Gillies, who throws his weight around, did it there. Dennis Potman. Potman coming out. Langeman firing it into the Detroit zone. Throwing it after it very long. He tips it away from Hicks, actually. It comes back to Potman. He lost it. Here's Paul Woods on the move. Woods has Polonich coming up the right side. Woods cut in, took the shot. The loose puck bounced out in front after the save by Smith. And Paul Woods with a great opportunity, and Smith stopped him. Now the Islanders head back again. Langeman bringing it out center ace. His pass tipped off Glenn Hicks. Hicks picks it up for the wing. Cleared it out to center ace. Now Paul Woods lost it. And Mike Bossy starting in, and it was very long that came back and prevented that. Paul Woods again. Now Woods rather slowly took it to the line. Dennis Polonich giving chase into the corner along with John Tonelli. Tonelli pulls up along the side of the goal. On the left side, it skipped too far for Trunche, but Trunche's going after it. Taking it into the Detroit zone, he's knocked to the ice by Polonich, and the play was whistled down on an offside. So with a score 1-0, Detroit will be back in just a moment. We have played eight minutes, 40 seconds of the first period. Detroit won, New York nothing, a power play goal by Willie Huber. Set up by Peter Mohamed. Play goes back into the Detroit zone. Jimmy Rutherford clearing it into the corner. Danny LeBratton took a bump there from Harris, but it's covered by Dale McCourt. Now cleared to center ice. Nedimanski's pass to McCourt to LeBratton trying to break through. McCourt held it in. McCourt, his pass knocked away. Bill Harris picks it up off the skate. Of Nedimanski, but clearing it out. Now to Nelly at center ice to Wayne Merrick. Merrick drives it in behind the Detroit goal. They go into the corner. Nedimanski and Harris to the opposite side now. Kept in by Dave Lewis, but Dale McCourt dug it off the boards. He's being checked right there by John Tonelli. Cleared on the far side, but now here's Person with it. Lewis, or rather Harris and Miller were doing some bumping. Puck brought right out in front. And it's standing his ground. Rutherford made that save. Here's Merrick. Going low, Miller knocked it away, and now it's Danny LeBratton coming out. The wings are three on two with LeBratton over on the right side to Nedimanski. Big Ned fired the shot right on, and Smith dumps that to the corner. LeBratton goes in after it. Danny LeBratton back now to Miller. Person gave McCord a whack along the back of the head. Person goes in behind his own goal. He's out on the left side now to Tonelli. Dale McCord failed to get to it, and the Islanders at their own blue line. 
It's up in person now. Clearing it down the ice, in behind the Detroit goal. Rutherford will stop it there, and John Hamel comes out. Clearing it on the right side, Nedomansky, a long pass, Errol Thompson. Now Thompson drops it off. Wings waited for it. Perry Miller lost it. Bringing it in now. That's shot by Nystrom, and Jimmy Rutherford had to handle that carefully. And again, we do apologize for a distorted audio portion of this program. And we continue to work as best we can to clear it up for you. Here's a case where Perry Miller made a little drop pass, figuring his own player was there, and he put it right on Nystrom's stick. Nystrom took a shot from well out. It was head high, and Jimmy Rutherford made an easy save. Mahovlich, Foligno, and Terrell Thompson now. Face off to the left side of the Detroit goal. Number 16 is Steve Tambellini, and against Mahovlich, he won the draw. Nystrom playing it back on the line. That shot, Lorimer fired it wide. Here's Dennis Potman at the left point. Cleared it in behind the Detroit net. Rutherford sent it to the corner. Lorimer went in after it. Willie Huber didn't get to it. It was Rutherford that knocked it away, and the wings do clear it out, bouncing it to the center ice zone. 1-0 Detroit, 9.20 to go in the period. The first. Buck got by Huber, so Rutherford will play it. Rutherford lost it, taken away. A centering pass. Peter Mohamed drove it over to the side. Wings aren't getting it out. Sit right out in front of the Detroit goal. Mike Polino this time. Polino cleared it out. Now to Errol Thompson. Thompson back to Polino. He carries in. Here's Polino trying to move out in front. He's hooked that time by Nystrom. And coming out of the goal, Smith plays it into the corner. Dennis Potson playing it over on the right side to Lorimer. Center ice. Tambellini. Now it's Keller tearing into the Detroit zone, being chased by Willie Huber. They go in behind the goal, and it's Greg Jolly that came up with the puck. He feeds ahead now to Harold Thompson on the right side, Polino. Polino flipped that one, and Smith juggled it a bit, fired it into the corner. Polino gave his man a bump, but it comes out. Keller takes it. Anders Keller ahead to Bob Bourne. Bourne chasing it after it. Bourne took the shot wide. It's cleared now on the right side, Mike Polino. He shot it down the ice. That's going to be called icing. As back after it, Lauren Henning. The Wings lead it 1-0. We're going to be back after we pause now for this. Red Wings lead the game 1-0. 8 minutes, 16 seconds to go here in the first period for the Nassau Coliseum, New York. Reed Larson, number 28, swinging in behind his own goal. Larson being chased by Lauren Henning. Turned out on the other side. That's Billy Hogabaum. His pass taken now by Dennis Polonich. Polonich played it behind Sobchuk. And it's cleared over to Stefan Person deep in the New York zone. He played it too far for Gary Howitt. And Larson fires it right back in. Person goes after it. He's into the corner with it. Perry Miller is on now as a forward out on the left wing or right wing on this line. Long pass down the ice. Hogabon tipped it away from Howitt. Reed Larson being shoved along the board, but that's Dennis Sobchuk who took it and tries to work away from Howard. Got it out to center ice, now to Barry Long. Barry Miller over the line. Here's Miller, his pass to Long. Long dumped it off to the side of the Islander goal. Nevin Pearson playing it now at the Islanders, Lauren Henning. He cleared it, it's knocked away by Larson. Larson ran into his own man Sobchuk, and going into the corner after it, Levinson played it along the board. Langevin's pass didn't come out. Sobchuk held it in. That's Billy Hogabom clearing it out in front. Now Person again. Gary Howard. Lauren Henning. Henning, number 10. Fired that shot. Rutherford grabs it. Rutherford played it away out on the right side as Larson heads in after it. Reed Larson handing it off to Sobchuk ahead now to Perry Miller. Miller over the line. Miller dropped it. But Dennis Polonich failed to get to it. Back out at center ice. Very long. He just took the long shot. Smith handles that with no trouble. Smith cleared it in behind his own net. Dennis Polonich brought it right out in front. It's cleared away. That Smith almost made a large mistake. Gary Howard, center ice. Six and a half minutes to go. First period. Now that's Glenn Hicks, number 23. Turned around by Trotche. Greg Jolly heads back into his own zone. Jolly, number 24, in behind his own goal and heading out for the wings. Now Jolly carrying it out to center ace. Over the line, he's got Hicks with him. Buck went off to the side of the net. Hicks went in behind the goal. Paul Woods dug it away, tried to center it, but the Islanders cover up. A long pass out on the right side. Mike Fossey and Gillies move in. Dennis Potman. Potman dropped the pass. Here's Brotche. Took the shot. Oh, and Rutherford came up with a big save. 
A penalty coming up to Detroit. On the delayed call, the play goes back into the Islanders zone. There's going to be a holding call, and the goaltender Smith has moved out of his net for the extra attacker as Polonis gets to the puck. The penalty will be called, and now Detroit will play short a man. We'll be back with the Islander power play after this message. The wing defensemen are not going to get a chance to rest tonight because this Islander club go in deep and then play the puck back out to their point men. Jimmy Rutherford comes up with a big save here, and as the puck bounces off, Jolly has to grab the player to stop him from making a play on it, and he gets caught. So Jolly goes off for holding, 14 minutes, 17 seconds the time of the penalty, and the Islanders have their first power play opportunity. That's Putman that almost lost it. It came to Gillies. Over the line, Trotche. Trotche fakes the shot, pulls up along the circle, sends it back to Dennis Putman at the blue line. That's Stefan Pearson with it out in front. Bossy with a shot, and Rutherford kicked it away. Clearing pass didn't come out. Trotche in behind the Detroit goal. Trotche goes to the corner, being chased by Larson. Puck stayed right there. That's Bossy digging it away. Mike Bossy took the shot, and Rutherford got a piece of that. Gillies bounces it back to the line. Stefan Pearson off to Clark Gillies again. Gillies handing it to Bossy. Bossy scores! Well, you give any player three or four turns at it, he'll put it in. They just kept the play inside the zone, and the wings were very careless trying to knock them off the puck. Bossy had three golden opportunities. Clark Gillies makes a little drop pass to him here. He's all off balance and a bad angle. He takes his backhand shot, puts it by Jimmy just inside the post. A real true born goal scorer. Gillies and Pearson will draw the assist on the goal at 15.01. So the teams exchange power play goals, and it is one to one. So Mike Bossy was the 11th goal of the year. Gillies and Pearson at 15:01. Game tied at one aside. Now Jean Amel lifts the puck, bounces it into the Islander zone. Bob Lorimer goes into the corner after it, sends it off to center ice. Perry Miller has it there, shoots it right back in. in behind the New York goal. Islanders move to center ice, Dave Lewis. That's Merrick trying to cut through. He was checked by Danny LeBlanc. Merrick still has the puck. Bounced off to the side and they have a court set. Court didn't get it out. The Wings having trouble again, moving it out of their own zone. Netta Matsky did. Now here's Harris. Bill Harris. He was checked by Hamel, who took a heavy bump, but still got the puck loose. Dedemansky cleared it ahead to Danny LeBratton on the left side. He's grabbed, sent to the ice right there by Lorimer. Now this is Hamelli moving out into the Detroit zone. Knocked away from him by Perry Miller, and then dumped up into the crowd by Bill Harris. And the play will come out over the Detroit blue line. In the last three or four minutes, the Wings are giving the Islanders too much, too much space up through center ice. They're carrying the play to them. The Red Wing Forum Club is sponsoring a fun-filled two-day trip to Toronto, Ontario for the Wings Maple Leafs game December 22nd. The price of the trip, including round-trip bus transportation and night lodging, ticket to the game, refreshments on the bus. For more information, you can call either of the two numbers that are listed here, 292-8097 or 381-4165. Willie Huber sends it back to Greg Jolly. Now Jolly and Huber bringing it out to center ice. Huber a long pass. That picks over the line. Bossy bumps it in along the board. Into the corner, Dennis Bossman clearing it to the opposite side. Now it's cleared ahead to Clark Gillies. Gillies pass. Let's buy everybody. Rutherford out of the goal. Jimmy Rutherford controlled it there. Bounced it high, and it's Jolly with it. Jolly just puts it out to center ice. Three minutes, 20 seconds to go. Here in the first period, the game is a 1-1 tie. Red Wings and the Islanders as Jolly starts out again. They're heading out of Paul Woods. On the right side, too far for Polanic. That's whacked back by Langeman. Wings pick it up again. Willie Huber a back and shot, and Smith grabbed that. Played it into the corner for Putman. Dennis Putman starts out. Off to Harris. Now Putman moves again with it. Billy Harris and he over the line. Took the shot. Rutherford stops that. Jimmy cleared it now to Hicks. Hicks played it on the left side, but the Wings didn't get it out. Hicks this time drives it down the ice. When off an Islander player, there'll be no ice. 
Dave Langerman goes back after it, clearing it all the way to center ice to Kellen. Kellen's pass broken up. He got it again. Being checked from behind by Felino. Here's Peter Mahovlich. Now Mahovlich gets over the line, had to pull back. That's Reed Larson, two and a half minutes to go in the first period. Very long. Very long's pass, knocked away. He picks it up himself. Now long, just lifts it in the air, flips it off to the side of the net. Person goes after, clearing it out on the left side now. Kellen had trouble there with Reed Larson in the wing. Peter Mohavlich has it. Mohavlich, a long, bouncing shot. Smith handles that. Step and Person. Now Person, bringing it out to center ice, playing it deep into the Detroit zone. Coming back is very long. The Islander player, Keller, was knocked down, didn't get up, was waiting for a penalty that didn't come. Here's a quick pass from Dale McCourt. Polino trying to work his way in. He was hampered a bit by Lauren Henning. Played deep in the Detroit zone. Polino goes in with Person. Getting into it, Dale McCourt. Buck sent to the other side for defenseman Dave Lewis. A minute 35 to go in the period. Kellen moving it out to center ice. Turned around there by Dale McCourt. Nedimansky failed to get loose, and Person drives it back into the Detroit end. In behind his own goal, Reed Larson. That's nice from in after him. Larson put it right out in front of the net. It's cleared away. Nedimansky. Dale McCourt failed to get loose. Finally, it's Reed Larson turning a minute and ten to go in the period. Very long. The Wings having trouble moving it out of their own zone right now as Larson is deep in the corner. Now to Long. Very long of the Wings, skating it out center ice. A long pass, the Bratton is onside, working around Putman, and Putman tipped it off his stick. Putman goes after it. Now Dennis Putman, moving his way out to center ice. 50 seconds to go in the period. It's tied at 1-1. Bourne takes it over the line into the Detroit zone, trying to go through. And that puck driven right at Rutherford, who's cleared it away. They go in along the board. Zedemanski gets into it with Long. And they hold it for a face-off to the right of the Detroit goal. We'll be back in just a moment. We have 38 seconds to go here in the first period. Each team has scored a power play goal. Each team has had just one power play chance, and they make it up. Mike Bourne is number 14, and against Dale McCourt of the Red Wings, deep in the Detroit end. McCourt won the draw. Willie Huber is in behind his own goal. Now Huber leads off to Dale McCourt. He swings in behind Rutherford again, a half a minute in the period. McCourt. Skating it out to center ice. Dumping it out on the right side for Willie Huber. He's the Detroit goal scorer. Willie played it off to the side of the Islanders' net. Cleared along the left wing for Gary Howe. How it checked by McCord. He put it out in front, but nobody there. The wings had dropped back. Seven seconds to go in the period. Bob Bourne turned around center ice by McCord. Dennis Putman took it over the line. Shoots it in behind the Detroit goal as the buzzer goes to end the first period. And so here very quickly, the first period scoring summary brought to you by Magnavox and Predator Appliance Store. It was John Tonelli picking up the first penalty of the game at 422 and about a half a minute later, 451. Peter Mohavlich carrying down the ice, beating out in front, and Willie Huber whacked it home. Then with Greg Jolly serving the only Detroit penalty at 1417, it was Mike Bossy on a fine play set up by Gilly, the person also drawing an assist. Bossy got his 11th goal, so the team's exchange power play goals in the first period, and it ends in a one-to-one tie. The end of the first period, the score Detroit 1, New York Islanders 1. Here at the Nassau Coliseum, the game tied Detroit 1, the Islanders 1. Well, you know as well as I do that there is a great deal of amateur hockey played around the state of Michigan, and a good deal of cost goes into equipment. We asked Alf Goes and Dan Olsevich to the Red Wings to give us some tips on taking care of equipment. Only the, the talk everywhere we go now in the rinks, uh, minor hockey people, and you see me, I'm an amateur hockey player, it's uh, the tremendous cost of, a, of outfitting a hockey player today. I know uh, pros is one thing and, and youngsters another thing. Roughly, what would it cost to put a professional hockey player in equipment? Well, roughly, Al, to outfit a professional hockey player, I would say approximately $600. Okay. From, every, from underwear right to sweaters. Okay, that's a lot of money. Now, hopefully, it's not that much for a, for a youngster. What do you think for a youngster, maybe 10, 12 years old, playing minor hockey? Well, playing minor hockey, I would think you'd run in the neighborhood of $200. Okay, when you're talking about $200 for a youngster, or certainly... Uh, Five, six hundred dollars for a pro. It's uh, obviously very important that these people look after the equipment. Now, the Red Wings have you to look after theirs. Now, somebody's got to look after the youngsters. Now, let's take, just for example, we'll go through and we'll grab a pair of skates here. Now, a pair of skates, that might cost what, that pair of skates? 
Well, this here particular pair of skates for the pro probably runs about $130, though. But for a minor league player, I would think probably 60 70 75 depending on the caliber of skate. Okay, now you look after all the stuff here for the wings. Now, uh, how would you suggest to, uh, to a parent or to the boys, now they have to do a lot of this stuff themselves, how would they look after the skate so it's going to last longer? Well, first of all, the most important thing is to do is to dry the skates off after every game, every practice. Secondly, what we do with the wings when we go on the road, we have what we call a skate bag, which I have here. What we do is we put them in the bag. Mainly, there's two reasons for it. One, to protect the skate, the edge. Secondly, that skates are nine out of ten times are wet, and it keeps the rest of the equipment clean. Okay, not only clean, but there's always a chance the way stuff gets thrown around, the kid's stuff too, that you could cut another piece of equipment with a That's sharp right. Bit. That's very right. Okay, now, that's the skates now. I think probably your second most uh, expensive piece of equipment is a pair of gloves. Now, obviously, it's important that kids have good gloves. Now, the same thing there now. How... How are you going to look after those? And what do they have to do to, to, to keep those in good working order? Well, first of all, Al, after they, they work out or play, the most important thing is to have them dry. Secondly, when you're using sticks, you should tape the handle of the stick because if you cut a stick off, you have a rough edge, and constantly, if you're twisting your hand, you wear a hole in the palm. And also, if you use friction tape, uh, there is something in the tar that... Is a, affects the leather and wears it out twice as fast. Okay, I think we got a couple of rolls of tape right here. For example, you're talking about friction tape. Now you're talking about this black tape as opposed to uh, the green gauze text tape. Now this is what you're talking about. Yes, this, fric gloves. this friction tape here, Al, it has a tar in it and the tar gets on the leather and it just destroys the leather. So what we do with the Red Wings, we have this gauze text. What we put on, they can put the black tape on, but then they cover it with this and this will make the glove last probably three times as long. Okay, and it only takes two or three rolls, uh, wraps around the handle to, to have that covered up and protect the handle. That's right, it makes it a little more colorful too. <laughs> All right, uh, we've talked about gloves, and we've talked about the skates, and, the, and there are other, of course, other pieces of equipment now. Pants, let's grab a pair of pants here, just as an example. Oh, we got a youngster's pair right here. Yeah, I got a big pair right here. Now, pants, uh, a nylon shell, and they're filled with pads, of, Really, there's not a whole lot you can do to maintain them except to keep them clean. That's right. Uh, with our club, we wash the pads after every six games. We just take the, the pads out, throw them in the washer, and then bring them back to the room, hang them up, and they're ready to go for another week. Okay, the same thing now with, of course, with, uh, with elbow pads. There's nothing wrong with putting those in right. the washing machine and, uh, and shoulder pads, right? Definitely. Most of them now are made of nylon, so you can just throw them in the washing machine and they're dry in probably two, three hours. Now, I know we've missed a couple pieces of equipment, but we want to touch on something else here. Now, with, with the cost, the way we're talking about on, on equipment, what can people do now to, to save a little money? For example, looking at a pair of skates, is it imperative that a youngster, for example, have a new pair of skates every year? No, I don't think so, Al. The, the most important thing is to get a pair that fit the boy properly. And if you have to trade them in, trade them in and get the right size, first of all, Secondly, you can always go to a sporting goods store and uh, trade the old ones in and get a new pair that fit them properly. You don't have to buy new ones. They can be second-hand ones because there's all kinds of them around at all the sports shops. Well, the important thing, of course, is that they, that they fit properly. And, and years ago, I don't think the skates they used to have anywhere near the support in them that they do now. Is that not right? Well, today, most of your skates, uh, especially the plastic ones, have uh, real tremendous ankle supports. And all you need is one light pair of socks in them, and away you go. Okay, now the thing that you need play, to play hockey with is, is, of course, hockey sticks. And uh, we got a couple of hockey sticks here right now. And I, I know that, uh, even myself, I see that the professional hockey players, they don't think that they need tape on the blade, so I don't put tape on my blade. But it, it's important, naturally, for a youngster in particular, and a lot of them are playing street hockey with their game sticks, to make sure that his blade is taped. Well, it's important to tape them, because if you don't tape them, Al, what happens, you're going to use them once or twice, and they're going to be broken. And then when you're talking 8 $9 a stick, uh, if you play for Detroit Hockey Club, fine, they'll pay for it. But uh, if you're just playing uh, for your dad, your dad has to shell out that 8 $9 every time, and I don't think he'd be too happy. And as you can see, Al, this blade is taped. And also on the other end, we were talking oh, yeah, about the gauze text. The gauze text right. And we have it on this stick, and, and this particular fellow will probably save the hockey club some money because we don't have to repalm this I think gloves. you mentioned $26 for repalming a pair That's of gloves, right. and uh, that adds up to be a lot of money. 
Um, now, the other stick here we've got you showing, it's the, you showed us the one that's taped, and this, of course, doesn't have any tape on it, but you see a lot of players. Now, what's going to happen here, of course, probably is that uh, the, the stick is susceptible to breaking without tape on it. Well, what's going to happen to this stick here is where it's, where it's glued together right in the joint. If, if the person using it doesn't hit the puck properly, that's, that's the first place it's going to go. And nine out of ten times, it probably wouldn't make one game. Okay, now enough about the sticks. We have a glove here. We, we want to show you what can happen now with a glove when you don't look after your sticks and look after your gloves properly. And this is going to, this pretty well indicates to you what, what can happen. This is caused by the stick, right? This is caused by the stick. As you can see, it's worn out here where he hasn't probably taped the stick properly. Not only that, he's cut the center piece out, which is reinforced. Grants you, he doesn't have to pay for it, so he's done it. But the little guys, it should leave it in there, and that way they can at least get one season out. And also, Al, uh, on the fingers, I grant you the, the stitching may come undone, and a little needle and thread will solve that problem. I think in, after in talking about this now, a lot of the stuff this, is a lot of parents uh, have the habit of leaving their equipment in the back uh, seat of a car or in the trunk of a car until the boy has to play next time. Now, you're suggesting, I think, that the gear be taken out of the car and be hung up somewhere and be properly maintained. Is that right? Right. After every game, it should be brought home, hung up, dried out, possibly washed once a week, and sprayed with a little deodorant or something like that. Or Just a little disinfectant, maybe. Or right. Because everybody likes a nice, meat, sweet smell. It makes it a little more fun for the rest of the guys in the locker room. Danny, I really appreciate it. I know you've helped me a lot, and I certainly hope that you've helped the youngsters and the mothers and fathers out there. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, and best of luck. Thank you, Al. We'd like to thank Patrick McAllister of Honda and Cadillac for his suggestions on this feature, The Care of Equipment, and for being our guest on Red Wing Hockey, Puritan Sportswear. We'd like to present Al and Molly with a handsome sweater and sports shirt ensemble. Puritan, America's standard of quality in men's sportswear. Puritan, available at fine stores everywhere. We are at the end of one period of play here at Nassau Coliseum. The Red Wings won, the New York Islanders won, and we'll return in just a moment. Well, we're here at the Nassau Coliseum, Sid. A uh, wide-open game, really, that first period, because a total of 27 shots, I think, would indicate that. Red Wings had 11 of them, and the Islanders, 16. Well, I thought Jimmy Rutherford made the key saves, though, Bruce. The wing defensemen are going to know they're in a hockey game tonight because the Islanders have a habit of throwing the puck in from, say, the blue line or center ice, forcing the defensemen to go back and make a play on the corner, and they're moving all three forwards in deep. Then they have fellows like Potvin and Pearson and those fellows back in the blue line that move in eight or ten feet inside the blue line. It seems that their whole attack is geared to get possession of the puck in the corner, get it back out to the point men, and then run a screen out in front of Jimmy Rutherford. And it's going to make a tough evening. The wings start giving them a little too much ice later in the period. Early in the period, they were moving down, checking them down there. And so I would think Bobby Crime is going to have to tell them to come out, just do a little more skating. The Islanders haven't impressed me that much as of yet. They've been struggling this year, too. Well, they did. Uh, they struggled to attend a 5 victory their last game here Tuesday against the New York Rangers. And Sid, there were a lot of repercussions in that game. That was a Tuesday that we came to town for a Wednesday night game in New York. And the papers here were just filled with the idea that here at the uh, Nassau Coliseum, they have a local fast food chain that gives a bowl of chili to everybody who has a ticket. If the Islanders could, uh, should score six goals, well, they had scored eight. And when they scored eight, somebody came up with a bright idea of saying, well, if they score ten, we'll make it a double chili. And this just rubbed it into the New York Rangers, and they were one unhappy team. And your guest in the second intermission, Bill Torrey, was a little embarrassed. Well, I'm going to talk to Bill Torrey about that and just see what he says. He said he didn't know anything about it when it happened. Well, I'm sure he didn't. He's first class all the way. Well, the score is tied at 1-1. The teams are coming out, and we'll be back with second period action after this. Each team scoring a power play goal in the first period. Willie Huber getting his as Jimmy Rutherford adjusts the mask. And as Sid said, he was far and away the outstanding player, I'd say, on the ice in that first period as he kicked out 15 shots. And the only one to get by him was a power play goal by Mike Bossy. The Red Wings had 11 shots in the Islanders, 16 in the period. Bobby Crom looking on behind the Detroit bench. Giving a little workout to the gum tonight. You know, I, think... an, I was going to say, this is an important game to the Islanders, too, Bruce, because they leave after this game for a six-game road trip. And the Wings, this is the Wings' third game of a six-game road trip. 
So the teams are at full strength as period number two is about to get underway. Troche against Mohavlic. Mohavlic scoops the puck into the Islander zone, and the Red Wings make that quick player change. Larmer played it into the Detroit zone. There's Gillies with a shot, deflected away by Reed Larson. The Islanders still control it, though, but picking it up was Errol Thompson. Thompson dumped it into the corner, and that's Polonich going in after it. Ahead to Paul Woods. He played it to the line. Now here are the Islanders coming back, three of them. That's Bossy, number 22, dumping it right out in front. And it was Trotche that tipped it wide. Barry Long goes into the corner. Paul Woods got it loose. And Glenn Hicks clears it down the ice. Back into the New York zone, Gillies number nine. Now Gillies sweeps it out on the left side. It's played back to Bossy. They're still inside the Islanders' blue line. Hicks knocked it away, but Trotche covers up. Now Gillies... He's got Potvin coming down the left side. Dennis Potvin checked right there by Reed Larson, and Hicks will swing in behind his own goal. Send it over on the left side, but there's Lorimer with it. Lorimer's pass broken up by Dennis Polanic, who bangs it out to center ice. That puck bounced into the crowd, and the faceoff will stay at center ice. We have played a minute and ten seconds of period number two with a 1-1 tie. There's a young man from Michigan Tech. He played his collegiate hockey there, Bob Lorimer. Pretty good hockey player, and uh, he's one of the fellows that you have to give credit to Al Arbor, a former defensive hockey player, defenseman himself in the National League, with Potvin and Pearson and Lorimer. These kids have all come along like gangbusters. Uh, the Islanders are considered to have one of the best defenses in hockey, and I would think you have to credit Arbor as a defensive coach. The Islanders' Dave Lewis back at his own blue line, hands it off to Stefan Persson, young man out of Sweden, dumps it deep into the Detroit zone. Rutherford out of the goal, clearing it to the corner. Billy Harris is there, put it right out in front, but Huber covers up. Now it's Dale McCourt taking the pass from Danny LeBratton, firing that shot that Smith dropped right out in front of him, but Persson's there to cover up. Stefan Persson dropping it off for Lewis. Lewis sweeping it along the boards on the right wing for Harris. He lost it, kept in by McCourt. Here's Dale McCourt giving it to Danny LeBreton with a shot and the save made. Buck came back toward the line, but coming out with it is Harris. Billy Harris heading into the Detroit zone. Checked there by Huber, and LeBreton will take it off the boards. Danny LeBreton back into the Islander zone, drops it off from McCourt. McCourt pulls up, put it right to the goal mouth. Steered into the corner, a centering pass by Nedimansky. Huber goes after it. Huber took the shot, and Smith is going to hold on to that one. And now the wings have begun to press a bit. And the wings have had two or three good whacks right here in a row. And with a score tied 1-1, we'll be back in a moment. It's off in the circle to the left of the Islanders' net. Peter Mahovlich with Thompson and Felino. Perry Miller and John Hamel. Here's Miller with a chance. He whistled the shot. It was blocked by Nystrom and ended up in the crowd. Bob Nystrom, who's just coming back off an injury, took a pretty heavy shot right there. It's a frantic flatfoot dash for the Orchid Room as Kay Kaiser saves the day in My Favorite Spy, tomorrow's 8 o'clock movie on TV 50. Peter Mahovlich kicked it back toward the line. Thompson then sent it back to center ice, and it came back in offside. We've had two minor penalties in the game, one to each of the two teams, and each team scored power play goals, and that's the hockey game, 1-1. Number 28 is a young man out of Sweden, Anders Keller. Played with Anders Hedberg, which has, must have been a pretty fair line in Sweden. Now the play taken by another Swedish hockey player, Stefan Pearson. Play intercepted here now, moving back into the Islander zone is Errol Thompson, who shot deflected into the corner. Thompson went in after it. Handed it off to Peter Mahovlich. He's got Miller open. Mahovlich took the shot instead. And that went wide. And the wings are checking well up the ice now. That's Mike Felino taking the pass from Hamel. Felino handing it back to Miller. And Miller played it into the corner. A centering pass by Felino's knocked away. And Nystrom has it. Now Bob Nystrom turning in his own zone. Nystrom worked around Mahovlich. Comes out center ice. He got by Perry Miller. Miller knocked him off balance. But here's Bob Bourne. Bourne cutting right in front. And the puck knocked away by Rutherford. And a bouncing puck. They can't find it. Now it goes to the corner. And Miller picks it up. Cleared it to the line, but not out. Pearson's shot was blocked by Errol Thompson. And Mahovlich heads out. Here's Peter Mahovlich coming out center ice. Three of the wings over the line. It comes now to Felino with a shot. He scores! And the wings lead it 2-1. to one. And he made no mistake on this. It was a play where they cut the Islander defense in deep. 
Mahovlich made a little pass over to Felino after he got over the line, and let me tell you, he unloads this puck. He, he stops to get all the wood on it, and he beats Smith cleanly on the right-hand side, just down fairly low. And rookie Mike Felino draws his fifth goal of the season. Scored by number 17, Mike Felino. The assist to number 11, Peter Mahovlich. So Mahovlich has drawn the only assist. He's assisted on each of the two Detroit goals. This one comes at 3 minutes, 17 seconds. Mike Felino. Now here's Mike Fossey carrying back into the Detroit zone. Tried to split the defense. Rutherford came out to clear it to the side. Hogabon played it back of the net, and he was decked. Buck came right out in front. It got through Gillies down the ice. Glenn Hicks in a move for it. Hicks trying to work away. Here's Hicks cutting in, and he was checked at the last second and knocked into the Islander goal. They're into the corner, Hogabom. And Dennis Potvin, the puck came back out to Trotche, though. He missed Bossy with a pass. Boy, Glenn Hicks put on a burst of speed, almost. Worked right out in front of Smith. Now Potvin, a right side pass to Bossy. Back into the Detroit zone. Play broken up by Hogabom, and Dennis Sobchuk starts out. Sobchuk coming out center ace. Over the line with Hicks. Sobchuk dropped the pass, but Potvin knocked that away. Very long, sends it off now to Reed Larson, ahead to Sobchuk, over on the right side, Dennis Polonich moving in. He's got Hicks open, but the pass was broken up by Trotche. They go into the corner and hold it in along the boards. And the wings have come on a lot stronger here early in the second period. And we'll be back with more of the action in just a moment. You are watching Red Wing Hockey on WKBD TV 50. Detroit leads 2-1. to one. Dale McCourt wins a face-off. Here's Willie Huber with a shot. Oh, and that puck bounced off Smith just wide. Came back to the line. Jolly held it in. Sent it in behind the goal again, but they said it was offside that Jolly played it from behind the blue line. And Willie Huber came within an inch or two of picking up his second goal. Uh, Smith misplayed a low shot, hit his glove, and hit the outside of the point. He unloaded it right from the blue line. And Smith makes a bad, very careless play on this. Just missed the open corner. Now from the face-off, Pearson cleared it over on the left side. Dave Langevin shooting it into the Detroit zone. Rutherford again out of the net to play it away from Harris. And that's a pass intercepted. There's a shot fired wide of the Detroit goal by Tonelli. It's right out in front of the net and cleared off. Here now, Danny LeBratton leading a three-man rush for Detroit. Down the boards on the left side, he went around Person. Goes to the corner. LeBratton put it right out in front, and Netomansky fanned on it. He was tied up there to some extent by Langevin. Coming right back now into the Detroit zone, Wayne Merrick. Merrick dumped it into the corner. Tonelli played it back on the blue line. Into the corner it goes again. That broken stick in the way. It belongs to Jolly, who's playing without one. Harris, he lost the puck. It's cleared ahead now, and this is Netomansky moving out with... Dale McCourt, Nedimansky got over the line. He worked around one man, but the puck slides off to Person. Person being checked by Nedimansky. LeBratton didn't see it coming, and he was heading for the bench. Here now is Harris. Harris knocked away from him by Jolly, sent back to the Islanders' blue line. Person has it there. He shot it over two lines, way offside. The play will come back inside the Islanders' line. So the Red Wings lead the game 2-1. to one. Mike Foligno's fifth goal of the year. 3.17 the time. Well, it's golden boy Georgie Goble lighting up the stage with hilarious laughter on Comedy Shop. Tonight at 11 o'clock right here on TV 50. Sobchuk, Billy Hogabom, and now Perry Miller on the left side on the line. Lorimer playing it in behind his own net. Lewis dumped it out on the left side, and Gary Howe at number eight. Being checked by Sobchuk. His pass broken up by Miller, who tips it back into the Islanders' zone. At center ice, Bob Bourne played it back to his own line, and Bob Lorimer heads out. Lorimer's pass knocked away by Hogabom. He has Sobchuk. He's going one-on-one -on -one with Lewis. Sobchuk took the shot, and Lewis blocked it. Sobchuk trying to get to it. Lewis holds him off. Here's Hogabom holding it in. Billy Hogabom sweeping in behind the goal. He tried to center it. That was knocked away. Hands it off to Sobchuk. Sobchuk tried to jam it into the goal crease, but three of the Islanders turn out with Lorne Henning, number 10. Henning driving it into the corner. Perry Miller goes in with Bourne, and Miller tipped it back out center ice. Lorimer has it there. Buck played back into the Detroit zone, cleared back out center ice again. Now Potvin. Potvin checked right there by Miller, turns back, waits for his team to come back on side, hands it to Lorimer. 
He shoots it in behind the Detroit goal. Greg Jolly picks it up. Played it deeper into his own end. Willie Huber hands it back to Jolly. Now there's a fight going on right down below us between Bob Bourne and Perry Miller. And that's Bourne with Miller head down on the ice. And this broke out along the boards right along the Detroit blue line. I don't know what provoked this at all. I just, I don't know who Bobby Crom is trying to rest. This is Miller's second turn out on the ice as a forward. He must be giving someone a breather or someone is partially hurt. Well, I haven't seen Paul Woods there much. We'll be back with more after we pause now for this message. That's Bob Bourne, there's Perry Miller. They get five minutes apiece for fighting with the time of the penalties at six minutes and 43 seconds. It was an innocent play along the boards. So Jolly had a hold of the puck. And Miller and Bourne just wouldn't let one another go. And first thing you know, they decided to drop the gloves and go after one another. There wasn't too many punches thrown. So the faceoff stays to the left side of the Detroit goal. Woods is on the Detroit bench. I don't know. I don't believe anybody's in her. I think maybe Bobby's just... Just giving Miller a few shifts up front. Trotche is out there now with Gillies and Bossy. Wings have Mahovlich, Felino, and Earl Thompson. Now from the faceoff, it came back to Lorimer, fired the shot, blocked by Thompson. Picked off by Barry Long, here's Earl Thompson, center ice pass to Felino. Big Mike goes to the line, took that shot, it deflected wide. Bossy took it along the boards, scooped it in behind his own goal, goes in after it himself. Now hands it off to his captain, Potvin. And his Potvin moving out. Coming out center race. Played it to Gillies. Gillies turned around by Glenn Hicks, who had just come on, and the puck sent back out center race. Bob Lorimer shot it back in with Gillies coming back on the play. And they're going to bring the face off right at center race. We have now 12 minutes and 46 seconds still to play in the second period. Two to one, Detroit leads. Goals by Huber and Felino. Now uh, we mentioned the fact that the General Manager of the New York Islanders, Bill Torrey, will be guesting with Sid Abel between the second and third periods. Reed Larson played the puck back toward the Islanders' blue line. New York picking it up, shooting it off to the side of the Detroit goal. Larson. Larson's pass coming up to Paul Woods out on the left side for Hicks. He had to go back after it. Sends it back now to Barry Long. Here's Long, a long pass coming up to Polonic. That was over two lines and offside, and the play comes back inside the Detroit blue line. And the wings right here now in the last minute, the last three or four minutes, they've had this Islander club uh, checked pretty well. They're not, haven't been near as dangerous as they were in the first period. And Bobby Crum is making quick changes. He has definitely had a game plan today where he wants a certain line out on the ice every time the Trotche line comes out. Now Arbor sends his checking line out with Dale McCourt, LeBraton, and Nedimanski. Dwayne Mary comes out with Harris, John Tonelli. Face off just inside the Detroit blue line. Dale McCourt in against Merrick. Very long and Reed Larson back along the Detroit defense. Shot knocked down out in front. Long cleared it now to Nedimanski on the left wing, LeBratton over the line, trying to work around Pearson. Here's Danny LeBratton still controlling it, put it to Nedimanski, scores! Pretty play by first Danny LeBratton, finished off by Nedimanski, 3-1 to one, Detroit. It was a pretty play, but I don't really believe he was trying to pass. I hope he was. It just appeared as though he was going to finally take a shot up towards the net. Smith didn't know that Nedimanski was there at all. LeBratton swings now back inside. He's looking for someone to throw the puck to, moves out towards center ice, just takes a little flip shot. Nedimanski's there all by himself. Smith I, didn't know he was there. I think it was a pass. I believe it was now, too, when you look at the replay. So now the play comes back out center ice. Danny LeBratton hands it back to Nedimanski. Big Ned with his third goal in two games now, and number 10 on the season. That's very long with a long shot. Smith knocks that away. Lorimer goes after it. Very long, also draws an assist. So the Red Wings lead it now, three to one. Here now, very long at center ice. Long's pass to Dale McCourt. He took it over the line. He stopped right there, and Lorimer has it. Lorimer's pass went by everybody deep into the Detroit end. Went off a Red Wing player, so there'll be no icing. 
Natamansky checked in behind the goal. He lost it there, but covering up Danny LeBraton. And it's knocked away from him. Merrick put it out in front. That's Harris handing it back for Lewis with a shot. Knocked down. Here's a chance for Lorimer. And that shot deflected to the corner, and Long goes in after it. Very Long played it well away from Merrick. Dumped it along the boards on the right side. Wings having problems working it out, though. Now it's Merrick with it again. Harris. Harris in behind the goal. It's sent out in front, and Nedimansky picks it up and shot it right into the Detroit bench. So the play whistle down, and it'll come back into the Red Wing zone. And that's the thing to do with it when they have you under heavy pressure like that. When you get possession of the puck, either ice it or put it up in the crowd to get a face off and give your coach a chance to change lines. Three to one, Detroit. We'll be back in just a moment. Dale McCord stays on to take the face off in the Detroit zone, but the Islanders won the draw. That's Lewis with a shot. Rutherford reached up, grabbed it off the top of the net, cleared it to the corner, but Gillies is there. Another shot knocked down in front by Willie Huber. On the left wing, this is Glenn Hicks. Hicks moving in, trying to work around Lorimer. Fell down, the puck slides into the corner. Now Lorimer in behind his own goal. Bob Lorimer heading out. Good pass ahead to Troche. He's got Bossy digging in. Let the play broken up by Greg Jolly. Bossy took a bump from Hicks. Dennis Polonich played it in behind his own goal, and that's Willie Huber with it. Now Huber's pass knocked away. But failing to get loose was Bossy in the wing. Slide it back into the Islanders' end. Dave Lewis ahead to Trotche. Trotche's pass to Gillies. Taking it now is Dennis Polonich. Polonich working over the line into the New York zone. Being checked there by Lorimer. That's Hicks digging it into the corner. Hicks trying to work it away from Bossy. And the Red Wings pressing in the Islanders' zone. They whistle it down, and a face-off stays to the right of Smith in the New York net. And this line for the second night here on the road, or the third night, uh, have been one of the better lines in the hockey club. They have checked the big lines on each occasion. Kalanich, Hicks, Paul Woods. Then they throw, they come out with the makeshift line, then with the switching the center ice when I was trying to think of Sobchuk. Sobchuk just changing it around, and they've been very effective. Nedimansky at 7.48 from LeBraton and Long, the third Detroit goal. That's Dennis Potvin in behind his own net. Now Potvin swings it out on the left side. A long pass tipped deep into the Detroit zone. Nystrom heads in after it. Barry Long knocked it away and took a bump at the same time. Mahovlich tipped it out to center ice and back after it. 26 is Dave Langevin. He played it right onto the stick of Harold Thompson. Thompson handing it to Felino out in front. Felino took the shot, and it was deflected away. Langevin goes into the corner after him. Now he handed it off to Potvin. Dennis Potvin putting it out in front. Into the corner again. Vanovan and the Red Wings checking well on the play. Harold, or rather, uh, Reed Larson, a pass that's knocked away. Pambolini trying to work in. Covering up there was Thompson. It's still deep in the Detroit zone. Puck came back out. That's Potman handing it off. Langevin with a shot. Knocked away by Rutherford. Dug out by Keller. Keller tried to center it. That's broken up by Errol Thompson, and Peter Mahovlich starts out. Nine minutes to play as Peter Mahovlich moves in, trying to go through. He was turned around, took the shot, shot it wide. And it's sent wide of the goal again by Felino. Barry Long held it in. And then Nystrom picked it up, slides it back into the Detroit zone. It goes just to the side of the Detroit net. They waved off the icing, though, and Reed Larson will bring it out with a pass to Hogebaum. Billy Hogebaum and his pass broken up by Potvin right at the Islanders' blue line. Nystrom turns with it. Bob Nystrom. He starts his man out to Nelly into the Detroit zone. John Tonelli. Here's Tonelli. His pass broken up, and the wings move out two on one. Here's Peter Mahovlich. Three of them coming down now. Mahovlich put it right out in front, and Errol Thompson shot it wide. Oh, wide open. A perfect pass, and he shot it wide. Right back is Potvin. Dennis Potvin, he lifted it up into the crowd. What a chance for Errol Thompson. Sir. Golden opportunity, and Mahovlich made the perfect play. He delayed, went right in deep, and he just he just used the Islander defenseman as a, a decoy, went around the outside of him, now made the perfect pass across. And Errol Thompson shot it wide of the net. So the play will come inside the Detroit blue line. Well, Mr. Thompson will have no better opportunity to score goals than he was just afforded on the play by Mohavlitz. Bill T. 
Montare, the general manager of the Islanders, guesting with Sid in our second intermission, which is eight minutes and six seconds of playing time away. Dennis Sobchuk now. He's got John Amell up on the left wing this time. Coming out with it now is Sobchuk. Sobchuk shooting it in. Billy Hogabom digging in after it. Fell down. A puck came out in front, and Sobchuk was stopped by Smith. Oh, and what a chance he had as Smith, falling down, made the save. Dennis Sobchuk within a whisker. Puck fired all the way back into the Detroit zone. Hamel was hauled around. Now that's Greg Jolly going in behind his own goal. Out on the right side, too far for Huber, but it's tipped ahead by Hogabom, and this is Sobchuk. Over the line, John Amell with a shot, and that's Stefan Person who deflected it into the corner. Digging in after it is Tonelli. Tonelli being checked by Hogabom. Hogabom took it away, holds it along the boards, and a face-off comes out over the Islander blue line. And the Wings we have taken the have thunder seven. right away from this hockey club. They've had them in trouble all the second period. Billy Hogabon fell there when he had a golden opportunity. Sobchuk. Look at Sobchuk, but Smith makes a big save here. Just threw his body, got his pad on it. Well, the Wings, first Thompson and then Sobchuk. Peschke's Great American Bacon is featured at local Farmer Jack stores. Dennis Polonich comes out now with Hicks on the left wing. Paul Woods will center the line. And Hamel, who was up on a forward a moment ago, is back along the defense with Miller, who's been up as a forward, too. That's Dennis Potvin deep in his own zone, handing it off to Lorimer and back to Potvin. Now it's cleared into the Detroit zone. Gary Howitt put it right out in front, but covering up was Hicks. Buck driven all the way down the ice, and they're going to call an icing as it bounces off the side of the Islander goal, and Bourne is back to touch it. So the play will come back in to the Detroit end. Huber of Detroit, bossy of the Islanders with power play goals in the first period, and Paulino and Nedomansky have scored here in the second. And Earl Thompson and Dennis Sobchuk were that close. Yes, uh, they could have added to it. We'll say again, uh, Nedomansky hadn't scored for quite some time, got two goals the other night, uh, uh, and then come right back with one tonight with his wife in attendance. Uh, maybe we'll have to talk to her into making the trips. Peter Mahovlich. Lost the draw to Bourne, it came to the line, they said no icing. John Amell went chasing after it, picks it up, rolled it ahead to Paul Woods. Woods fanned on it the first time, it's slid all the way to Rutherford. Jimmy played it over on the left side for Perry Miller, he's checked, trying to work away from Henning, take it in behind the line. And there's going to be a penalty coming up in behind the goal, the Red Wing player Hamel and Howitt had collided. One of them's going to get the penalty, and I think it may be Hamel. Yes, I think John Hamel's getting it. So while he heads in, we have a pause on the action. It's 3-1 to one Detroit. We'll be back in just a moment. Gary Howitt's a tough little cookie. That's Perry Miller going along, but watch. John Hamel took a real good chunk of Howitt and got a penalty for interfering with him behind the net. 13-15, the time of the penalty. So the power play chance for the Islanders. Paul Woods is out with Dale McCourt. Penalty killers, Barry Long and Reed Larson. The Islanders have the pressure on, though. That's Clark Gillies in the corner, sending it to the side of the net. Turning with a trotche. Now it's Bossy. Mike Bossy back on the line. It comes to Potvin. He hands it back to Bossy in the circle. They put it right out in front. It goes to the corner. Gillies taking it off the boards. He was checked by Barry Long, and Dale McCourt has it. Handed it off to Paul Woods, and Woods shoots it the length of the ice, and they've used up a half a minute of Hamel's interference penalty. Dennis Potvin in behind his own goal. Now Potvin plays it off on the right side, and Trotche starts out. Ryan Trotche checked there by Dale McCourt. McCourt took it away from him, played it all the way back at his own blue line to Barry Long. And Long lifts it in the air, shot it into the Islander zone, and going after it, Person. And a minute of the penalty time has gone by the board. Moving out, Stefan Person again, bringing it out to center ice. Now Person drives it along the boards. Rutherford stopped it in behind the net. Cleared it into the corner. Trotche checked there by Reed Larson. It came back on the line to Potvin. He fired it into the opposite corner. Gillies takes it there. Played it back on the point to Person. Now Person's pass knocked away. That's Trotche moving out in front. He was checked by Long. Long shoved him in along the boards. Now it's Bossy with it. Mike Bossy trying to work away from Larson. Put it right out in front, and Rutherford stopped Gillies. Big save, and Harold Thompson picks it up and shoots it down the ice. And Rutherford came up with a dandy save on Gillies. Now Potvin again. 
15 seconds remaining in Hamel's penalty time. Here's Gillies. Gillies off to Bossy. Bossy played it over the line. Checked right there. Now a chance for Troche. He was stopped by Long, who went low and stopped a soft pass. And the Wings clear it to center ice in two seconds. Hamel will be back on. And the Red Wings are at full strength. Here's Potman moving in. He was checked by Errol Thompson. It's stepped in by Nystrom with a shot. He scores! Bob Nystrom makes it 3-2. Jimmy Rutherford got most of this puck. Hit him in the glove. Bounced right through. Just a case where they were checked at the blue line. Nystrom, Nystrom takes a shot. Rutherford got a lot of it, but he couldn't hold on to it. They killed the penalty. Hamel got on the ice, but never got back into the action. And this puts the Islanders back in the game in a, in a period when they've really been outplayed. That's the first goal of the season for Nystrom. We mentioned he's playing just his third game. He's been out with an injury. The two defensemen, Pearson and Stott Potman, draw the assist. Puck flip right to Jimmy Rutherford. He's going to hold on to it. And the play will stay in the Detroit zone off to the left side of the Red Wing goal. So Nystrom from Potman and Pearson at 15-21. And now it is three to two. Detroit leading by a goal. Edmonton playing at Hartford tonight, and the Whalers lead Edmonton two nothing in that game in the second period. Greg Jolly sent it into the corner to Willie Huber and back now to Jolly. Jolly in behind his own goal, hands it off now to Dale McCord. His pass was knocked away. Bourne holds it in. Nystrom into the corner. McCord intercepted and starts out three on two now. The Wings down the left side for LeBratton. Edamansky coming up with him. Here's the pass to Nedemansky, but it was broken up by Lewis. McCourt dug it away, but couldn't control it. And coming back now, number 28 is Anders Keller to Bourne, shooting it into the Detroit zone. In behind his own goal, Rutherford. Played it into the corner. It got by Nedemansky. The Islanders hold it in. Keller's pass broken up now by Jolly. Greg Jolly to Danny LeBratton. He took a bump along the boards. Covering up was Jolly, and he sweeps it out to center ice. Nedemansky digging after it, but Lewis got there first. Keller let it go through to Nystrom. Nystrom hands it off to Bourne with a shot, and Rutherford had to move sharply to keep that one out. Now LeBratton heads right back down the ice for the wings. Into the Islanders' zone. He's taken off the puck by Lorimer. It's cleared out now to center ice, and Nedemansky has it there to LeBratton. Danny LeBratton hands it back to Nedemansky. Big Ned with it. His pass on the right side. Huber sends LeBratton over the line. Danny LeBratton looking for somebody, but his pass broken up. And it's dumped out to center ice. Going after it was Harris. Willie Huber covered up there, and Jolly starts out. Greg Jolly heading out of Hicks. Glenn Hicks carries into the Islander zone right along that blue line. Turns with it, cleared it to an open wing. Coming out with it now is Harris. He played it to Merrick. Hicks coming back with Merrick. Here's Merrick's carrying in. A good chance now with a shot by Tonelli. And Rutherford came out and stopped that. That puck is still in the Islanders, or rather the Detroit zone, into the corner, Tonelli. Paul Woods goes in along the boards with him. Two minutes, 35 seconds to go in the period. Now the Islanders coming on. Merrick took a bump from Woods. It's still loose back of the Detroit net. Tonelli has it. Back on the line. That shot got through. They score! Fired by Dave Langevin from the blue line. And Rutherford, I don't believe, ever saw it, and the game is 3-3. Three three. Give all the credit for that goal to Tonelli. Tonelli just kept out fighting people for the puck behind the net. They put on terrific pressure. Tonelli just kept working, working, working. Finally got it out to the point. The shot along the point. I don't think Jimmy right into the corner. I don't know whether anyone touched it out in front of the net or not. But I don't believe so. Mr. Tonelli just defied the wings to have the puck when it was in along the boards. He just took it away from everyone. His fourth of the year, score by number 27, John Tonelli. Well, Tonelli got the goal, so he did touch it out in front. The assist to number 26, Dave Langevin, and number 11, Wayne Merrick. Time of the goal at 17. So Merrick and Langevin draw the assist, and it was deflected in by Tonelli. And the game is now a 3 to 3 tie. Now that's Mike Felino digging into the corner, playing it back on the line. Larson took the shot, but it was knocked down by Mahovlich. Coming right back down the ice. Over the line was Merrick. He's slowed up by Long. That puck loose out in front, and Long is down on top of it, and they're shoving and bumping into each other. 
Out in front of the goal, but the play has been stopped with a little less than two minutes to go in the second period, and we'll be back in just a moment. Game is a 3-3 tie. The Wings led it 3-1 and could easily have had two more, but now the Islanders have come back. We have a minute 57 to go in the second period. Dale McCourt with Felino and Thompson. Felino moved too quickly. Face off to the right of the Detroit goal. Felino dumped it down the ace. It got by Potvin and back after it is Lorimer. Bob Lorimer in behind his own goal. Up on the right side to Bossy. Now Troche turned around. The play went in offside. And they'll come out over the Detroit blue line. A late whistle. Live from Atlanta, TV 50 presents special coverage as the Detroit Pistons take on the Atlanta Hawks. That'll be Tuesday, November 20th, 8 o'clock, right here on TV 50. And then next Wednesday, Sid and myself will be right there at Atlanta with a game of the Flames on Television 50, if you will. 8 o'clock. That's the Red Wings' next game. Their next home game is the 27th, a week from Tuesday, against Montreal Canadiens. Now moving in again, Trache, he was checked, coming out with it as Hicks, he's bowled over. A heavy check on the part of Lorimer. Now Gillies dropped it back for Potman. Moving into the Detroit zone, Dennis Potman. Potman's pass broken up by Long. Over on the left side, going after it, Gillies, he held it in. Bossy knocked it down, and Woods is going to get a penalty. And Paul Woods is going to go off. They let him go for a bit, but Woods will go off with a minute and 12 still to go here in the period. And the Red Wings have picked up the last two, three penalties. And it's tough taking penalties against this hockey club because they can really put the pressure on. Billy Hogebaum could have possibly made a play on that puck along the boards, and Paul Woods come in to help him. Got his stick caught in the player's skates. Got a tripping penalty, and Paul Woods was knocked down right after that play, and an Islander could have got a penalty. They just let that one go. There's. Hicksy running into that one. He didn't see that one at all. He could have got a penalty there, too, for getting his stick and, and wood up into his face. So the Wings now will see what they can do about the Islander power play. The game remaining in a 3-3 tie. Now the timers bench has called the referee over. With a message there, the clock shows a minute and 12 seconds still to go. In this, the second period, but the penalty clock is not functioning. So that evidently was what that's all. There it goes. No, that's just the time remaining in the period. They have not posted the penalty up there. They're just explaining it now to the captains of the hockey clubs that, uh, that the clock, now they have it up on the board, but... Well, it's up there now, and things should be all right. Face off the rim of the circle out in front of Jimmy Rutherford, the game a 3-3 tie. The Wings definitely controlled the play in the first half of the period. They fought off the penalty to Jean Hamel. He was back on for a total of six seconds. But Nystrom scored a goal that was actually Rutherford didn't really see. It wasn't a heavy shot, and then Tonelli tipped in a rather soft shot from the blue line to make Last it a 3-3 tie. Now here's Gillies moving into the Detroit zone. Goes to the corner. Went to the opposite corner. Still moving with that puck. Controlling but it's taken away by Dale McCourt. And he shoots at the length of the ice. 45 seconds to go in the period. The Islanders have the extra man. Stefan Pearson moving out. Now Stefan Pearson. His pass coming up to Gillies again. Carrying back into the Detroit end. And it was Errol Thompson that stopped him this time. And Gillies twice. An individual moves has been stopped. A half a minute to go in the period. Coming out of his own zone now, Trotche on the right side to Pearson. Now Stefan Pearson shooting it in behind the Detroit net. Rutherford let it go and cleared it into the corner. Thompson has it there. Errol Thompson dumped it. It took a funny bounce off the boards. Reed Larson sends it now to Thompson. Just seven seconds in the period, and Thompson lifts it down the ice. That'll lead up the rest of the time. It will run out with the play deep in the Islander zone. So when the third period begins, Woods will have still 48 seconds of his penalty time remaining. So here we have the second period scoring summary brought to you by Magnavox and Fredder Appliance Stores. With the game tied at 1-1 at the end of the first period, 
It was Mike Felino with a pretty play from Peter Mahavlich at 317 that gave the Red Wings a 2-1 lead. Bob Bourne and Perry Miller engaged in a touch of fisticuffs went off five minutes apiece for fighting at 643. The teams were at full strength at 748 when Danny LeBratton fed a pass right out in front of the Islander goal and Nedimanski deflected it home for his 10th of the year, very long, also assisting. John Amell went into the penalty box for interference at 13.15 of the period. He had just come out when Nystrom let a weak shot go along the ice, but I believe that the Red Wing goaltender Jimmy Rutherford was screened all the way on it, and Nystrom from Potvin and Pearson at 15.21. Then two minutes later, 17.36, Tonelli from Langevin and Merrick as Tonelli deflected the shot in out in front of the goal, and Woodson off for tripping at 18.48, and said when the period was over, uh, Bobby Crom was over on an opposite corner, not near the dressing room, and having words over there with referee Brian Lewis as he skated off at the end of the period. So that's it, the end of the second period. The game tied at 3-3. We'll return to the Nassau Coliseum. A highly successful third period during the course of the season thus far. They've been outscored, and the Islanders have been a strong third period club. We'll see what happens now. We mentioned that in that second period, eight shots for the Red Wings, eight shots for the New York Islanders. The overall shots, Detroit 19, New York Islanders 24. Also, and I uh, would point this out really because just to show that the Wings have really been in games, they've lost six of their last eight games. Well, I can't say that now uh, because they won, of course, in the game in Washington. But we made mention of the fact last night on radio that they had lost six of their eight games coming into that one. And of the six they lost, four of them by one goal, and they were in the game right up to the latter moments of all of them. And You know, Bruce, I think they've played better on the road, especially the last, say, three or four starts. They played very well in New York. They played well again last night in Washington, and they've played a strong 40 minutes here. Uh, they're playing better now. I think they're getting their, their game together a little better, and they're getting a lot of mileage out of Dennis Polanich and Hicks, uh, Sobchuk, uh, Paul Woods, fellows that earlier in the season weren't doing too much checking or scoring for them. Now they're at least checking, and now you've got Nedimanski and Larson and these fellows starting to score again, so uh, they can maybe turn things around. Well, they have to check right now because Paul Woods has still 48 seconds of a carryover penalty. Called for tripping at 18.48 of the second period. And the Islanders begin the third period with the extra man. That's Stefan Person handing it off now to Dennis Potvin. Hutfin over the line into the Detroit zone. He was checked there. It comes back to Person. Person's pass into the corner in behind the Detroit goal. Coming out of the goal, Rutherford, but the puck went loose, and that's Potvin bringing it back to the blue line again. Dennis Potvin trying to move out in front. He did. He took a shot. Very long blocked it, and it was driven just wide of the goal. Clark Gillis handing it to Bossy. He was checked again by McCourt. And Dale McCourt managed to beat it down the ice. Ten seconds of Woods' penalty remaining as Potvin circles in behind Bill Smith. Rink wide pass to Troche. Now Troche moving it out, coming back on as Woods. The wings are at full strength. Moving out in front, Troche, but Woods tipped it away, and it comes out center ice. That's Gillis. He dropped back on the play. Played it too far for Bossy. Reed Larson has it. Now it's very long. Long, a long pass on the right side. Woods is over the line with it, took the shot. That was blocked, and then Woods was knocked down by the man that blocked the shot, Dave Lewis. Trotche, over the line. Killer sent it over the line, or rather over the net. Came along the boards on the left side. Very long, goes chasing in after it, but beating him to it. The Islanders, Keller. Keller being checked now by Reed Larson. Still the puck loose. Nystrom got into it, bumped Sobchuk off the puck, but Sobchuk moved in with Larson's help and took it away. Now that's Dennis Sobchuk handing it off to Hogabaum, back to Sobchuk, put the pass one in offside. Pause on the action, game tied 3-3, we're back in a moment. Bruce Martin, Sid Abel, our producer Marvin Muse, and here at the Nassau Coliseum, where the Red Wings and the New York Islanders are tied at 3-3, and you take a look at Steve Tambellini wearing the number 16. We have Sobchuk out with Errol Thompson and Billy Hogabaum. Greg Jolly and Huber back along the defense. That's Nystrom. Nystrom, the puck kicked away by Thompson. Tambellini then shot it right back into him. It's still loose right along the Islander blue line, cleared back into his own zone, and here's Dave Lewis with it. Now Lewis shooting it along the boards, stopped by Willie Huber. Huber scooped it over on the left side. Sobchuk going after it. It's tipped away from him. 
Greg Jolly. A weak pass. Huber had to hustle back after it. It's cleared out to center ice. Dave Lewis has it there. Brought it back in. He's given a bump along the boards by Willie Huber. Greg Jolly trying to work away from Tambellini he did. His pass coming up to Perry Miller. Sobchuk and now Hogebaum. Billy Hogebaum. Here's Hogebaum putting it right on in front. That Miller was all tied up and coming out of the goal. Smith shot it down to center ice. And the referee, I believe, has called a penalty. I would think so. They were holding uh, Sobchuk out of the play. Miller couldn't get back in to pick up a loose puck that was out in front of the net. They just had a lasso hold on them. So the Red Wings will have the extra man, and we'll be back with our power play after this message. Well, I'd have to say I honestly didn't see Anders Keller commit the holding penalty, but he did, and he's off at 226. The Red Wings give only their second power play chance. Dale McCourt won the draw. Willie Huber, a short pass to Netomansky. It comes back to Huber in the circle. Now Willie Huber put it out in front, and that Danny LeBratton, he was tied up before he could do anything with it. Lorimer fires it right into his bench, and I'll tell you, Al Arbor and his team moved out of the way of that one. So Keller goes off for holding, 226. The Red Wings scored their only other power play chance, the first goal of the hockey game. Willie Huber was led perfectly by Peter Mahovlitz. But now the Wings have Larson and Huber back with Dale McCourt, Ned Amansky, and LeBratton up front. McCourt will go in against number 14, Bob Bourne. Play deep in the Islanders' zone. McCourt won the draw, but the puck went in between the two point men all the way back into the Detroit end, and Huber's back after it. Reed Larson handing it back to Huber. It bounced away from him. And Huber tipped it, but not out. It's kept in by Henning. Here, though, Netomansky picks it up. Three-man rush for the wings now as Netomansky, LeBratton on the left side. He dropped the pass right onto the stick of Gary Howitt. So coming back, Dale McCourt, and he was checked by Henning. Willie Huber cleared it in the corner now to Reed Larson over on the left side, and Danny LeBratton and McCourt move out with Netomansky trailing. LeBratton over the line. Here's Netomansky with a shot. And Smith knocked that away. It came back to the line. Larson hands it off to Willie Huber. He played it onto the stick of LeBratton. He tipped it wide. Went over the top of the goal. Now it's Netomansky taking it out of the corner. Netomansky back it comes to Huber. Huber has Larson on the point. Larson fired the shot. That deflected wide. That's Netomansky with a shot. The save made in McCourt. Just dumped it right into the goaltender. And he was open. And he holds on to it. Out in front, LeBratton. And oh. Potvin have the sticks up high. And, and Potvin, Potvin swung his stick at LeBratton. We'll see what happens. And he hit him right over the, the, the hit him on the helmet with a stick when they were just standing looking at one another. Oh, what a chance Dale McCourt had, Sid. Well, you've got to give Smith credit. He came over and took the angle and just stood there. And Dale, I probably, I would think he didn't have anything to, any place to put the puck. So he just had to shoot it into him. Well, the penalties are going to be called. We'll wait and see what they are. I think Potvin is the only man going off. We'll be back in just a moment. Dennis Potvin off for slashing. Yes, the shot came in, and uh, now it goes across in front of the net. They had a chance to score. LeBratton tipped that up, and it hit right up on top of the net. Now back to the live action. The Wings with a two-man advantage, but the puck came out to center ice. Dale McCourt back after it. He lost it, taken away by Bourne. Here's Bourne. He overskated it. Peter Mahovlich has it. The Wings have a two-man advantage for 25 seconds now. The time left in Keller's penalty. McCourt carries in. Dale McCourt. McCourt fired the shot right into the New York player. Here's Reed Larson with it. Wings with a two-man advantage. It's handed off now to Thompson. He fanned on it, gets up, picks it up again. He played it way behind Larson. The Wings with a two-man advantage. It doesn't look like it. Thompson hands it off now to McCourt. McCourt fired another long shot. He scores, and the Wings lead it. And that comes with a minute, or rather one second left in the first penalty. He just releases so, the one man. So Detroit will still have the extra man. And that puck went right through the legs of the defending defenseman for the Islanders. He came out to try and block it right by his leg, and then over on the far side, Smith never made a play on it. Still, Sid, you kind of feel that the puck should be thrown around a little more when you have a two-man advantage. Well, they made a couple of bad passes, Bruce. Uh, they were trying to pass too wide and uh, making the passes too soon. Detroit leads it 4-3. to three. Dale goal. McCourt, seventh goal of the years. season. A power Dale play goal, McCourt. and the Wings still have the extra man. The assist, number 12, Harold Cumberland. Potvin has a minute 15 to serve in his penalty. 
Thompson and Larson draw assists on the goal. The wings carry back into the Islanders' zone. Going into the corner, Mike Felino. Here's Felino trying to center it. He was checked by Dave Lewis. Felino moved in, knocked it away from him. It comes out now to Thompson. Thompson handed it off to Mahovlich. It bounced away. Nedimetsky with a shot, and Smith kicked that out. Gary Howitt goes after it and clears it down the ice. Nedimetsky back in his own zone, starts Thompson out. The wings have the extra man for 40 seconds. Thompson to the line. He hands it off to Felino. Felino drilled a shot to save made. Here's a chance for Thompson with a shot. He scores! And the wings lead it now 5-3 to three with That's two power goal. play goals. A big goal there to get early in the third period. Scored two goals on power plays. And Mr. Smith never had a chance here. Felino took a terrific shot. Smith made the save. It come right back out to Thompson. He had a little trouble controlling it. Right from the top of the circle, he buried it. Smith never even moved over towards the open side of the net. So at five minutes and 11 seconds, Errol Thompson's eighth goal of the season. Felino will draw one of the assists. Number 20, and Nedimanski gets the other, and the Wings again have a two-goal lead. Now the teams are back now at full strength. Plays at center ice. Donnelly had problems with it. Dale McCourt dumps it in. Here's Nedimanski digging into the corner after it, playing it to the opposite side, but Billy Harris will take it off the boards. Harris being turned around. It came out center ice, and Greg Jolly played it now to Nedimanski. It went off the skate of Danny LeBraton. Tonelli turns with it. Off to Harris. Harris wound up for a shot, and Nedimanski deflected it high up into the crowd behind Rutherford. The big thing now, the wings continue to skate. They are skating well if they continue to skate and stay on the ice. Don't take any foolish penalties. They've got a golden opportunity here now. Solve all your gift-giving problems for that person who has everything with a gift certificate now available for any event at Olympia Stadium, Cobo Arena, and the new Joe Lewis Arena. Is your group interested in an outing to live family entertainment and sporting events? Well, you can call group sales at 895-5500. Harris with a shot over the top of the Detroit goal. Barry Miller bumped his man and going after the loose puck, Greg Jolly. Miller again is up playing a forward on the line now. Huber starts Sobchuk to center ice. He took that long shot that Smith deflects into the corner. Merrick goes in after it, being chased by Hogabom. Hogabom took it away. Hogabom hands it off now to Sobchuk. Sobchuk in the circle with it. He played it now to Willie Huber, a weak shot that was knocked away before it got through. Lorimer in behind his own goal to Dennis Potvin. Potvin shooting it out center ice. Now Tonelli trying to get through. The puck stayed right there. Sobchuk turned around by Potvin. They still battle for it. Now it's Tonelli with it. He cleared it to Merrick into the Detroit zone. Harris has it, and Harris lost it to Sobchuk. Sobchuk to Hogabom, and Potvin came back to knock that away. 13 minutes, 15 seconds to go in the third period. Detroit leading 5-3. That's Sobchuk, number 14 of the wings, dropping it back now for Greg Jolly, and now to Huber. Willie Huber up the boards on the right side, scooping it back into the New York end. Now Keller brings it, or rather it's... Uh, Lebron, then they brought it back into the Detroit zone. Gillies goes after it, and they play one in offside. Number 26, Dave Langevin, who looks a lot like number 28, Keller. Now Keller is the boy that you mentioned earlier from Sweden. He was in the Sweden national team for many years, played with Hedberg, and was the, I guess, the most valuable player in the league last year. They feel he is a prize catch. And Torrey really has built this team through draft picks. Now Person played it to Troche. Heading over the line again, Langevin sending it off to the side of the Detroit goal. Barry Long dropped it off for Reed Larson. Larson ahead now to Paul Woods. Woods on the right side, Dennis Polonich giving chase to the puck, but there'll be an icing call as Person's back to touch it and the play will come back into the Red Wings zone. The Red Wings and the Atlanta Flames next Wednesday. That'll be the next game for Detroit. They have three more on the road after this one. Our telecast time next Wednesday will be 8 o'clock. Friday, a game on WJR Radio with the Wings in Denver to play the Colorado Rockies. And a week from tonight, a 9 o'clock game, Detroit time at Minnesota against the Red Hot North Stars who haven't lost a game at home all season long. Dale McCourt comes out to take the face off against Brian Trotche right now. 
Play to the right side of the Detroit goal. Twelve and a half minutes to go. Trotche won the draw. There's that shot wide of the net, fired by Langevin. Taken off the board by Glenn Hicks. He has Reed Larson moving to center ice. Larson playing it into the corner. Digging it after it was Hicks. Person went in behind his own goal. Hicks goes in with him, takes him in along the boards. Gillies gets into it, and Woods has him tied up. And they'll keep the play in the Islander zone to the left of the New York goal. Paul Woods. And there is Glenn Hicks. Sit. He has played well. This kid skates. He, he's he got a little muscle. Doesn't seem to back off from anybody. And it's terrific, <laughs> terrific speed. Drafted by the Red Wings two seasons ago. Elected to play for Winnipeg in the World Hockey Association. And oddly enough, when he got there, and they he's didn't happy use him to be very here much. in the National League. Very long. Another Winnipeg player from a year ago. Now Potvin played it along the boards on the left side. Gilly starts Trotche out to center ice. Trotche lost it. Long's pass scooped back into the Islanders' zone by Woods. Lorimer goes in behind his own goal, back along the New York defense. Now Bob Lorimer hands it over on the left side to Potvin. Dennis Potvin to Gillies. Gillies pulls up. He played it out to Potvin with a shot. He fired it wide, and he was open. That puck goes into the corner. Larson dug it to the other side. Gillies goes in with Hicks. It came back. There's a shot by Lorimer, deflected wide. Bossy goes chasing after the rebound. Back on the line to Potvin, and here's Bossy putting it off to the side of the net. Trotche. Trotche's pass out in front. Lorimer, another shot that went wide. Now Mike Bossy as the Islanders have deep pressure on. Bossy being chased around by Polonich. Knocked down, but now it's Gillies with it. Gillies' pass broken up by Woods, and Woods shoots it out center ice. We have 11 minutes, 10 seconds to go here in the period, and the play is whistled down on an offside. Five to three, Detroit leads it. We're back in just a moment. First, Little Caesars introduced Pizza Pizza. Now the Islanders into the Detroit zone. Willie Huber moves in to deflect a Bob Nystrom shot up into the crowd. And the faceoff stays inside the Detroit blue line. Wings five, New York three. Detroit returns home tomorrow morning. They'll be working out, not at Olympia, but nearby rinks, and then on to Atlanta for the game Wednesday night. Long stretch away from home. Peter Mahavlich just run into a terrific check there and got knocked back down, but Peter usually falls and has a little smile on his face. It doesn't seem to bother him too much. Harold Thompson battling with Pearson to flex the puck back into the New York end. That's Mike Foligno, number 17, was kept away by Keller. Taken back into the Detroit zone, Bob Byrne, and it was Greg Jolly that stopped that. Now Person with it. Person handing it off. Donovan shot a bouncing puck. Rutherford handles that one. Jolly played it over to the left side, and Errol Thompson. Three of the wings moving out with Thompson carrying to center ice. Mike Foligno up ahead of him, had to pull up as Thompson lost it to Person. Now Stephen Person. Back over the line, Nystrom was stopped. Play well, came back out center ice. Nystrom broke his stick. Pearson cleared it off. Keller back into the Detroit zone. Coming out again is Huber. Now Harold Thompson's pass knocked down with a high stick. They whistle that down. The play will stay just over the Islander blue line with just less than 10 minutes to go now in this, the third period. And this game, I believe Bobby Crom, coaching the Red Wings, has done more juggling where he has come out with the kids to play against the Trotche line, and they've had them bottled up pretty well all night long. He has made two makeshift lines. There's Al Arbor behind his bench. He's a little concerned. The Islanders are only playing 500 here uh, at home, and uh, that's not like them. They only lost 15 games all last year, and they've already lost six. So uh, he's a little concerned about how they're playing. Nedimanski backhands it into the New York, and Smith stops it in behind his own goal for Potvin. Dennis Potvin. A long pass, go away from everybody. There'll be an icing call. The Wings get there first, and very long does. And the play comes all the way back into the New York end. Off to the left side of Smith. That's Wayne Merrick. Boy, right from Sarnia. Uh, mother and dad, uh, real hockey fans. Makes his home over in Sarnia during the summer. Dale McCord, Nedimanski on the right side, LeBratton on the left wing with... Larson and Barry Long. The Islanders have Merrick at center. Tonelli on the left wing. They buy for position. Harris over on the right side. 
McCourt won the draw. Quick shot by Larson. Oh, and Smith had to move sharply to knock that away. Larson had everything on it. Buck out at center ice. Very long. A quick pass ahead to Dale McCourt. McCourt giving it to Nedimanski. Now Ned back in. He overskated it himself. Comes back after it. Nedimanski drops it off for Larson. Reed Larson starts out. Here's Larson carrying down the left side, clearing it in. It goes in behind the New York goal. Dennis Potvin. Now Potvin turning away from McCourt's check. Right out in front of his own goal. Starts out. We have nine minutes to go in the hockey game. Over the line, Lorimer. Larson stopped him. And McCourt brings it out. McCourt's pass intercepted by Harris. He's got Merrick. And the pass humped over his stick. In behind the Detroit goal. Going in is Tonelli, number 27. He's a workhorse. It bounced around in front, but Nedimanski kicks it ahead for LeBratton. The wing's moving three on two. Danny LeBratton over the line. Checked there, though, by Person, who shoots it back to the Detroit blue line. Very long with it. Now long with Larson on the right side. The wing's changing. On the move, Larson just slips it into the New York end. Person will pick it up and start back. Left wing pass, Croce on the move. He shot it into the corner in the Detroit zone. Bossy came digging in. That's Gillies with it, handing it back to Person. Person's pass. Here's a chance now for Lewis right out in front. And it was Gillies that fanned on the shot. Back now to Trotche. Trotche hands it to Lewis again. Lewis was checked, but here's Trotche. And the goal, oh, the puck is in the net. It was stopped for a moment by Rutherford and then jammed through. And now it's 5-4. to four. I think Bossy gets this one, too. He made the save on the original shot. shot. Willie Huber can't quite reach the puck. Puck goes through. I don't know whether it was in before someone I reached Bossy. I think it Bossy was. I think pushed it back in after. There was a penalty to be called on Detroit, but because of the goal being scored on the delayed call. Oh, you're right. It was Bossy. Mike Bossy. The assist to number 19, Brian Trotche, and number 25, Dave Lewis. Time for the goal. So now the Red Wings lead by one with seven minutes, 52 seconds to go. Bossy's second goal is 12th on the season. Trotche and Lewis draw the assists at 11.54. And now the Wings with their work cut out for them. Seven minutes, 52 seconds still to go. That was a shot that Trotche fired. It was. It went over and hit the post, I believe, after it got through Jimmy Rutherford, and then Bossy just reached in, even though he was covered out in front you of him. You couldn't net. even see him. He was down on the ice. Peter Mahovlich now. He's got Felino and Errol Thompson with him. That's very long, clearing it out to center ice, and a shot back in offside. On the delayed call, the wings bring it out. Dumped ahead, Peter Mahovlich played it into the New York zone. 5-4, Detroit leads by one. Gary Hart bringing it down the ice. He was stopped there, Larson's pass though broken up. Lormer brought it over the line, went around Larson, goes to the corner with it, a centering pass. Gary Howitt dug it out of the circle, played it into the corner, Long goes in with Howitt. Two of them bump in along the boards. And Henning, number 10, gets into it. They hold the puck face off to the right of Rutherford. And now we have seven minutes, 19 seconds to go. Well, the Philadelphia Flyers playing at St. Louis tonight. And the Blues lead by a score of two to nothing. Well, there is Mr. Up. Howard got his elbows up into Long's face and everything. He's a worker. He's one of the smallest fellas in the league. The Dale Wings McCourt. can't sit back now, Bruce. They've got to throw it in the Islanders and then go in and make the Islanders make mistakes down in their zone. Dale McCourt now with Polino and Thompson. McCourt to take the face off against Lauren Henning. Buck stayed right there in the circle. And finally, Reed Larson digs it away. Larson clears it now to Felino down the right side. He was turned around, dumped to the ice by Lewis, and Felino has been hurt. He took that stick right along the face. It was very unintentional, I would say, on the part of Lewis. He just sort of jumped into it. And they come and check Mike Felino out very quickly as trainer Lefty Wilson comes out onto the ice. He was cut the other night, too, so on the face. Uh, he might have just opened the wound above his upper lip that he received in the New York against the Rangers. Well, he's getting up, and while he does, we'll tell you the game's 5-4 to four Detroit. We'll be back with more in just a moment. 
Mike Foligno remains on the ice. Game is 5-4 to four Detroit. And we have seven minutes to play in this, the third period. Now Lewis. Played it off the person, a long pass, just too far for Bourne. Coming out of the net, Rutherford cleared it off the glass. Harold Thompson scoops it into the opposite corner, very long, ahead now to Foligno. Here's Mike Foligno bringing it out center ice. Thompson is on the move, and that pass just too far in front of him. Thompson will go after it. If he gets there first, there will be no icing, but he evidently did not. His person touched it, and that will bring the play all the way back into the Detroit end. We're going to have a barn burner here now with six minutes and 36 seconds to go. The Wings trying to hang on. Best defense now is a good offense. They, I don't like repeating myself, but you just can't sit back and let this club come to you because they got too many scorers on the island routine. Dale McCord comes out with Metamansky and LeBratton, Greg Jolly and Willie Huber. Keller. Nystrom. There's Nystrom with a quick shot, and Rutherford, a big save. Another shot, and it's knocked away. It was fired by Tambellini. The wings, Danny LeBratton knocked off the puck along the board. They hold it there, and the whistle stops the play again, and Jimmy Rutherford came up with two dandies. Well, Jimmy Rutherford has made several key saves tonight. Uh, he just rubs. The puck is just left teed up. It's on its edge, but... Nystrom. Nystrom got good wood. Jimmy got his leg over to make the save, and it comes right back. A rebound comes right back into him, and he got over and covered it. But the faceoff stays deep in the Detroit end. Peter Mohavlich is out to take the draw against Tambellini. Buck stayed in the Detroit zone, but Mohavlich won the faceoff, and Jolly hands it off now to Willie Huber. Danny LeBratton was breaking down, but it was knocked away. And it's now Greg Jolly that stopped that. The wings move back into the New York zone. Netamansky. Netamansky's pass broken up by Potvin. Now Dennis Potvin over on the right side. Tambellini carries into the Detroit zone. He was checked and Huber takes it away. Greg Jolly made the defensive play as Huber starts back. Netamansky coming down the right side. He got over the line, but he stopped right there as he was taken off the puck by Keller. Now we have five minutes, 45 seconds to play. Third period, five to four Detroit. Islanders move back in. That's Tambellini sending it into the circle. Netamansky cleared it on the left side. It bounced away from LeBratton. And Danny just reached around, shot it into the New York end. Wings go for the player change now as Potvin sends Nystrom over the line into the Detroit zone. He was checked there. Billy Hogebaum took it away. It slides back to the New York line for Dave Lewis. Now he hands it to Person, ahead to Wayne Merrick. Merrick charging into the Detroit zone. That's Tonelli. Tonelli put it out in front, and Huber drove it in behind the goal. Tonelli digs it out again. Oh, here's a chance for Lewis with a shot, and Rutherford kicked it out. That puck bouncing around, cleared back to the line. Person has it there. That was Hicks who made a slide at him. Person with a shot, knocked down in front again. Cleared back to Stephen Person, another shot at the goal post. He wrapped it off the goal post. And they're down on top of the puck in front of the Detroit goal. Oh, he hit that goal post two, three Dead feet on. in the air. Dead on, Bruce. Uh, two or three shots. Wayne Hicks went out and made a real good play. He slid, tried to cover the shot. The shot comes back out to the point again here to Pearson. It's everywhere but in now. Comes across. Watch Hicks. He missed him. He gets it over here to Lewis. Well, you couldn't see it. it. Here's the shot now from Lewis, right here. Goes right through and hits the post dead on the left post, high over Jimmy Rutherford's shoulder. And we have now four minutes and 53 seconds still to play. Five to four, Detroit leads. We're in the third period. Dale McCourt comes out now with Thompson and Polino. Face off to the right of the Detroit goal. He's in against Wayne Merrick. Puck stayed right there in the circle again. It's still deep. There's Merrick with a shot. Kicked off to the side. Harold Thompson didn't get it out. The Islanders pressing. There's Person moving in. A bouncing puck and cleared away by McCord. Dale McCord bringing it out. Now McCord just scoops it in, heads to the Detroit fence. McCord will take the face off to the right and Mohammed to the left of their own goal. Now coming out Person. Four and a half minutes to play. Merrick. It's played over the line to Tonelli, picked up now a quick shot, and Rutherford grabs that and holds on as Billy Harris didn't get everything on it. 
But Rutherford had to grab that one on the short side. And if the wings have ever checked, they've got to check now. Jimmy Rutherford, he'll, he has held them in. It's up to the wings now to really give them a little protection. It's Peter Sellers and David Niven back in Spike Zingling action. The Pink Panther, Bill Kennedy at the movies, tomorrow at 1 o'clock on TV 50. Well, the big line of the Islanders now. Crutching, Gillis, Bossy, Potman, Lorimer. Trotsche in against Dale McCourt. Buck still not dropped by the Lions and Flaherty. Now it is, and the Islanders win it. There's Dennis Putman with a shot. That deflected away. Very long, in behind his own goal. He fired it along the boards, but it's kept in by Gillies. Gillies being checked there by Reed Larson. They hold it to the boards. And a whistle stops the play, and the faceoff stays still deep in the Detroit end to the right side of the Red Wing goal. And now we have four minutes, seven seconds to play. And We're it's in funny the what period. a goal will do, Bruce. The Islanders weren't going anywhere, and then finally they get the goal to get back in the game. And since that time, it's been just pressure, pressure, pressure. And again, the Islanders won the draw. Here's Dennis Potman again with another shot. It bounced right in front of the goal. Trotche centered it. Here's a chance for Lorimer with a shot wide. Oh, the Wings are getting a break or two now. Puck kept in by Potman. A good play. Off to Bossy. A centering pass. A quick shot. The save made by Rutherford. And the rebound shot wide by Potman. Potman's pass tipped out now by Errol Thompson. Thompson picks it up. Over the line. Fired a shot. And the save made by Smith. Now Bossy starts back. He played it too far for Gillies. There'll be an icing call as Jolly touches it, and we have three and a half minutes to go, and the play will come back into the New York end. Dennis Potman is the most dangerous man on their hockey club. He just takes his time. Bossy made the play across through the middle here. Watch Jimmy Rutherford come up with two or three saves in close. Potman just controls the puck when he's in, in deep. And he moves right in. He's like a forward out there. Errol Thompson made a good play there, taking it away from Gillies and knocking it down over the line. Now it's McCord, LeBratton, and Nedamaski up front with Jolly and Huber. The Islanders have Nystrom on one side, Keller on the other. With Merrick at center ice. Or the... No, it's Bourne at center ice, and Bourne wins the faceoff. Bob Bourne in behind his own goal starts out. His pass picked off by Lewis. Now Dave Lewis of New York, shooting it in behind the Detroit net. Rutherford let it go. That's Nystrom who sent it back to the line. Person dumping it in behind the Detroit goal. Nystrom trying to center it. Jolly covers up on him and cleared it over the left side to LeBratton. Danny LeBratton sent it out center ace. It slides into the Islander zone. Nedamansky giving chase with Lewis. We have three minutes exactly to play. Nedamansky stepping into Lewis. They have that puck jammed in along the boards in the New York end. And the face-off is going to come out over the Islander blue line. That's the place to keep the play now. Try to keep it down their zone. Forecheck them a little bit. Pass off Nedimansky. He scored only two games in the Red Wings' last, or two goals in the Red Wings' last eight games and got two last night. And he got one here tonight. LeBratton slides a buck off to the side of the New York end. Now that's Stephen Person in behind his own goal. The Islanders come out now with Bob Bourne bringing it out to center ace. Here's Bourne shooting it in behind the Detroit goal. Rutherford stops it this time, left it there, and Greg Jolly cleared it to the corner. Danny LeBratton didn't get it out, but Jolly followed up again. Still low, the play is deep in the Detroit end. Bourne is open out in front. The court spilled his man. Jolly tipped it to the corner. Going after it. Keller, now Person is in deep, and Jolly holds him to the boards, and the faceoff stays to the left side of the Detroit goal. And we have now two minutes and 18 seconds to play. Third period. And well, Greg Jolly, since his recall back a couple weeks or so ago, has played outstanding for Detroit practically every game that he's been back. He gives the Wings a little credibility back there to handling the puck. He can pass the puck so well. He can peek a fellow out and move it out and get, the, get it out of the zone. The Red Wings, you can see way over on the left side of the screen, Dale McCourt was putting up an argument with referee Brian Lewis. 
When the Red Wings were held down inside the Islander zone, he brought the face off right. out over the blue line. This time the Islanders held it, but the play stays deep in the Detroit end. 5-4, the Wings lead. Two minutes, 18 seconds to play, and this is the third period. Peter Mohamlitz with Thompson and Paul Woods now. Buck came back to the line. Lorimer fired that shot. Woods deflected it high, and Thompson brings it out to center ice. Errol Thompson still controlling it, scoops it in to the Islander zone. Dennis Potvin being chased by Woods in behind the goal. Now Potvin starts out. Here's Dennis Potvin on the move. He was checked, and Errol Thompson brings it back in. Thompson fired that shot, and he shot it wide. Here's Woods picking it up. Paul Woods out in front. Buck slid into the corner, going after it. Now is Tonelli. A minute and 50 seconds to go in the hockey game. Coming down the ice, Harris. Bill Harris over to Tonelli on the right side. He was stopped, and Mohamed just shot it back into the New York end. Dave Lewis has it there. Now Lewis shot it in offside, and the play comes back to center ice in a minute. 37 seconds remain to be played. And we'll keep an eye now on Bill Smith, the Islander goaltender. That's Billy Harris. Dale McCourt, Ned Amansky, and now Glenn Hicks over on the left wing on this line with Larson and Barry Long. Bobby's been breaking his lines up to uh, give, him, give him a little more defensive strength. He's got Hicks out there now in place of LeBratton. Uh, Danny LeBratton's probably a little tired. He's played an awful lot tonight, but they've all gone to the well tonight, all night long. They've, they've oh. come out with makeshift lines. Their defensemen are all playing with one another, uh, taking turns, coming out one time with Jolly. Larson's out here now with Long. Trotche and Gillies and Bossy up front now. For the Islanders, the play at center ice. An important face-off between Trotche and McCourt. And Trotche wins it. Now Stephen Pearson drives it in behind the Detroit goal. Rutherford let it go to the corner. Larson took a bump there from Gillies. Trotche with the puck, played it back to the line. It was deflected away. And that was Hicks that had trouble with it. Gillies battles for it again, put it out in front. There's a shot, knocked down, picked up by Dale McCourt. And McCord brings it out, a left side pass. Hicks took it over the line. He's dumped, trying to go in. And the play goes in behind the New York goal, and now we have a minute 10 to play. That's Mike Bossy, number 22, hit the referee. Pearson has it. Now Stephen Pearson, his pass off Troche will be taken by Reed Larson, who shot it right back in. We have 55 seconds to go in the hockey game. Buck came out right onto the stick of Reed Larson. Larson playing it back now to Barry Long. And Long cleared it right onto the stick as McCourt missed the pass. Person brought it in. Now Troche hands it off to Gillies. Gillies a centering pass. Long lost it. And it's taken by Reed Larson. And starting out of the net with Smith, he just got back in. As Nedomansky will turn it. Back out center ice. A right side pass for Larson. 30 seconds to go. Buck off to the side of the New York net. Smith plays it into the corner. Pearson drilled it to the other side. Now 20 seconds remaining. Play still deep in the New York end as Peter Mohamed was chasing Potvin. The Islanders try to work out. Nedomansky knocked it back in. 12 seconds to go. And Trotche handed it now to Tonelli, broken up by Larson. Five seconds as Peter Mohamed goes into the Islander zone. He took a whack, a penalty coming up to Pearson. And the Wings could care less because the buzzer goes. And Detroit has defeated the New York Islanders for the first time in a decade. Since 1976. And so that's it. And here's the third period scoring summary as the Wings just charge around Jimmy Rutherford, who played so well in the Detroit goal. The third period scoring summary brought to you by Magnavox and Fredder Appliance Stores. The game was tied at 3-3, but really it was Dennis Potvin that created the problems for the Islanders tonight because with Keller in the penalty box with still 44 seconds to serve, Potvin took a whack with his stick at Danny LeBreton and as uh, Potman went in, the Red Wings had a two-man advantage, and it was here that Dale McCourt scored from Thompson and Larson at 425. Then Errol Thompson got one, still on the same penalty, while the Red Wings still had Potman in the penalty box, so they had a one-man advantage. Errol Thompson scored the fifth Detroit goal from Polino and Nedomansky, 511. Mike Bossy got one back, his 12th of the year, from Trotchy and Lewis in a wild scramble in front of the Detroit goal at 1154 from that point on. The Red Wing defense and Jimmy Rutherford in particular took over and held off the Islanders. So that's it, the end of the game. The final score, Detroit 5, New York 4. We'll return to the Nassau Coliseum in just a moment. Well, said Abel, the Red Wings have played their third in a six-game road swing. 
They could well have beaten the New York Rangers in the opener Wednesday. They lost it 3-2, to two, but they played well. They defeated the Washington Capitals last night, and I wouldn't bet you two nickels, but they have done it here tonight against the New York Islanders 5-4. to four. And, Bruce, I think they deserve to win. Anytime you get goaltending the way Jimmy Rutherford played tonight, he just come up with gem after gem, and the Wings are scoring goals. They scored five a game tonight. They've got the big lines going, and uh, they checked like they've never checked before. They let the Islanders get back in the game because of penalties, and uh, that Potvin is so dangerous, but Pot Potvin did set up the Wings' chance to win the game when he took the double penalty, so uh, everybody's going to be smiling. We haven't had a chance to smile in this building since 1976, so the Wings haven't won here, so this is really, uh, really an extra bonus. Sid, I wanted to say we got some fine goaltending on the part of Jimmy Rutherford. Something the Wings haven't had too much of in recent games has been breaks, and they got three or four of those tonight. A goal that banged back off the goal post, two or three that could have been in and just slid by. But then again, the Wings in that second period could have had a couple extras too. In the third period, the uh, Islanders fired 11 shots at Jimmy Rutherford. Detroit eight back at Bill Smith. The overall shots and goal, the Islanders at 35 and Detroit 27 with the Red Wings with three power play goals. That's the difference in the hockey game. And so now the Wings on their way to Atlanta for our next telecast Wednesday night. The final score here at the Nassau Coliseum, the Detroit Red Wings 5, the New York Islanders 4. We invite you to join us next Wednesday, 8 o'clock, when the Red Wings meet the Atlanta Flames in Atlanta. Till then, this is Bruce Martin along with Sid Abel saying stay tuned for the post-game show. I've taken that for five or six years, so that doesn't really bother me too much. As I've said many times before, I may be 26, but, uh, but I'm going on 45. What's your philosophy, as you can put it into words, for uh, being a, ho a hockey coach? Well, first of all, I, I simply believe that, that coaching is, is a matter of two things, and that's 50% that's teaching and 50% motivation out here right now. And so I know my, my hockey players um, need both out there uh, on my behalf out there right now. So what I really have to try and do is, is, first of all, teach them how to play a disciplined system. And I think um, we've been maybe lacking in that department. They're very hungry for it, so I'm satisfied with that. They seem to be an intelligent crew. So I think it's going to be fairly easy, easy to teach them out there right now. It's just going to take a little bit of time. We haven't got a lot of time because um, people in Washington certainly have been very patient for four or five years, and so they, um, they want a winner and they want one right away, at least a very competitive hockey club. So we have to go about it as, as quickly as possible, and we have to teach our system and discipline them to it maybe faster than any other National Hockey League club's ever done. Within the framework of what is possible in the remainder of the 1979-80 season, what is the outlook for the Washington Caps in your mind? Well, I'm thinking nothing but positive. Um, I think we've got a, enough talent here to be a very competitive hockey club. Certainly in, in Boston, you know, here tonight, and, and we're speaking a few days beforehand the show, I guess, but, but I'm, I'm dissatisfied the fact that we lost, and whenever we lose, we, we can't be content. But the fact that we lost 3-2 in here tonight in a, in a tough hockey game, this is a, a very tough place to play a hockey game in in any part of the season. I have to, to think positively towards the fact that we taught a system in the last three or four hours today on a blackboard. We've never tried it out in the ice before. They've obviously never, you know, played it ever before. And so I thought they disciplined themselves fairly well in, in order to kind of eliminate and hold Boston to 20 shots. We didn't get enough ourselves out there right now, but I thought that um, we had a, a too many penalties out there tonight, and we were forced to have to kill them. We had that lead going into the third period, and as a result, I, I really felt that we could ha hang on to it. But one thing a good hockey club can do, and that's, and that's, you know, keep a lead and hang on to it. And we weren't able to do that tonight, but um, I still see a lot of signs there of being able to develop a good hockey club. There's only one place to go, and that's up. And, and I really feel that um, that we do have the, the talent here, and that we are going to do it. No question about it. Your debut, while not a win, was certainly a success. Congratulations. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. And this is Jim West with Gary Green. The Capitals went from Boston home to Landover, Maryland last night and were beaten again 4-2 to two by the Detroit Red Wings, so Gary Green is still looking for that first win in the NHL. Let us now look at the full National Hockey League standings. As we have told you, the Philadelphia Flyers continue to operate in top spot. The leading scorer among rookies this year plays for the Philadelphia Flyers, and he was the leading scorer in Canadian junior ranks last year. His name, Brian Propp, came from Brandon to Philadelphia, and in Philadelphia, Pete Silverman had words with Brian Propp of the Flyers. This is Bobby Taylor in Philadelphia, where the Flyers are on top of the National Hockey League, and one of the main reasons is the scoring exploits of their number one draft choice, 
Brian Propp. And Brian, there was a lot of surprise in the fires management last August when your name was still available, when they had to take the choice at the 14th pick. Well, uh, I came into it an o with an open mind into the draft, and I, I uh, didn't wasn't contacted by any teams before, so I just uh, let it come as it did, you know. And I was uh, happy to come to Philadelphia. You know, it's been a really great city for me so far. Playing with Bobby Clark and Reggie Leach uh, has to be. A th